The Detroit Red Wing Hockey Club brings you the game between the Atlanta Flames and the Detroit Red Wings. Red Wing Hockey is brought to you by your AMC and Jeep dealers, home of the AMC Concord Pacer Spirit and Jeep vehicles, and by Labatt's. For beer at its finest, call for Labatt's. And by Bank of the Commonwealth, trying hardest to help. And by Little Caesars, a winner any way you slice it. So we say hi again, everybody, from the Omni here in Atlanta. October 27th was the date, said Abel, back in 1978, 20 games ago on the road, that the Red Wings last won a hockey game away from Olympia Stadium. Since that time, they've played 20 games, they've lost 14, they've tied another six. The road has not been kind to them. Well, and home hasn't been kind no, to them either. No, Six ties out of a, six points out of a possible 40, and we keep saying that they possibly will make the playoffs. It's getting to be... Very, very rough. They're digging themselves a hole that I don't think they can get out of. And they're up against a club that has one of the better records in the National Hockey League, the Atlanta Flames, tonight. We'll be back with more after we pause now for this. <laughs> Sid, the Atlanta Flames may just well be the best last place team in the history of the National Hockey League. They're in the tough, tough division. They've got a great record, and yet they still have to do some catching up. One of the reasons that they are as good as they are is a young fellow named Bobby McMillan who has played some kind of hockey for them. You know, underestimated hockey player. They acquired him from St. Louis. He's leading the league in assists with 50. He's fourth in the over the all-time scoring of, the, of this year with Lafleur and him leading. He is just a tremendous hockey player and a player that Cliff Fletcher, the manager of this team, must be very, very happy with. And if we were to take a look at the Red Wings side of things, perhaps one of the very few bright points that they've had in, uh, in recent hockey games, and I'm going to say perhaps in recent weeks, would have to be the play of uh, the big kid back along the defense, Willie Hubert. Well, he was their first round draft pick. Ted Lindsay, there's no doubt he didn't make a mistake on this boy. He's going to be one of the stars of the National League. It's too bad that he hasn't got a real experienced hockey player playing with him. I think he would come on that much stronger, but he is a good hockey player. Well, the Wings, uh, after a rather pitiful performance yesterday afternoon, particularly in the third period in which they lost that hockey game, will be seeing what they can put together here against the Atlanta Flames tonight, and we'll be back with the opening faceoff in just a moment. Isn't it incredible how your tableware seems to disappear? No matter how often you replace it, there's never enough to match or go around. Now at Bank of the Commonwealth, when you put money into your savings, you can put Oneida Stamus on your table. So you collect Oneida, and your money collects interest. Trying hardest to help. That's the Bank of the Commonwealth. Deposit this at the bank, Beecham. We'll need another place setting for the ambassador. Yes, madam. Little 
see your local TV book for a free pizza coupon. Avast, mateys, the big boat and fishing spectacular has landed. It's the 1979 Greater Michigan Boat and Fishing Show at Detroit's Cobo Hall. Don't miss it. More boats, more fishing gear, more ways to enjoy the water than ever before. And everything's priced right. Over 800 cruisers, sailboats, dinghies, yachts, bass boats, and canoes, rods, reels, electronics, accessories, and so much more. Be ready for springtime. The 1979 Greater Michigan Boat and Fishing Show, Cobo Hall, February 3rd through February 11th. Hang on, it's rough terrain ahead. Last year, we never could have made it. We had a conventional two-wheel drive wagon. Now we've got a four-wheel drive Jeep Cherokee, and anything's possible. The road's pretty squishy up ahead. This would have bogged down our two-wheel drive wagon. But my Cherokee's equipped with Jeep's quadrant track, proven the automatic four-wheel drive with the best traction. Hey, Dad, can we make it up there? Billy, our Cherokee can go anywhere. Yeah. Maybe your next wagon should be a Jeep Cherokee. We wrote the book on four-wheel drive. you take a look at Andy Van Hellem and he'll be refereeing this hockey game with his two linesmen John D'Amico and Bob Luther. The Red Wings use Jimmy Rutherford in the nets in yesterday's game. Today it'll be Rogi Vashon and you see him there with the Red Wings grouped around him. Rogi Vashon in goal for Detroit in this hockey game at Atlanta. The Omni. And on the opposite end of the rink playing only his sixth game of the season Rajon Lemelin. Bouchard, who does the major share of the work, being given a rest in this hockey game today. So, Rajon Lemelin in the nets for Atlanta, and this game about to get underway. Red Wings will start with Dale McCord at center right. Nedomansky on right wing, and Perry Miller over on the left side. Back along the defense, that's Lori Glockner, the rookie. He's there with Huber. Buck bounced off Glockner, picked up by Huber, and he's being chased around by Willie Flett, number 25. But the Wings clear it out now to center right. Nedomansky dumping it into the corner. Heading in after it, number two is Greg Fox. Fox, big tall defenseman of the Flames, clearing it on the left side to Pat Ribble. Now Ribble, center ice pass, but was stopped there by Huber. Willie Huber digs the puck away at his own blue line, drops it back now to Glockner. Laurie Glockner was checked right there. Perry Miller covered up, clears it ahead to Nedimansky. He bounced it to Huber, and Huber bounces it just wide of the Atlanta goal. In behind the net, Dale McCourt dug it out, failed to get to it. He had it right in position. There's a backhand shot by Perry Miller, blocked out in front. Now Platt cleared it to the line, not out. Miller kept it in. Lochner went in deep. And Dale McCourt got a whack at it. It goes to the corner. McCourt goes in there with Fox. They hold it to the boards, and a faceoff stays in the circle to the right of the Atlanta goal. So the Red Wings and the Atlanta Flames playing their fourth and final game against each other this season. The other three games, Atlanta won two of them, the other ended in a tie. But as you recall, the last two games played in Detroit, and Bobby Crom was unhappy about the two of them. Atlanta scored two in the late moments to tie the hockey game December 13th, and the Wings were out in front, and Atlanta came from behind to win the last one, the 20th of this month, 4-3. to three. Now Paul Woods won the faceoff. That's Nick Libet's shot blocked before it could get through. Tommy Bergman holds it in. Woods chases it into the corner. Tried to work it back to Libet. He's being checked in along the boards. It came out to Eric Vail. Now Vail. Eric Vail at center ice. Over the line, faking the shot. Chenard, he took the shot finally, and Vashon came up and stopped that. Big save by Vashon on the first shot of the hockey game. Now Nick Libet, a rink-wide pass. Let's Bullduck took it over the line. Paul Woods went after it, but it's knocked away, and McMillan has it. McMillan clearing it out center ice. Eric Vail, Guy Chenard. And the pass just too far out in front of Chenard. It's cleared to the, over the glass up into the crowd by Vashon. We have played now a minute 39 seconds of the first period. Well, 
Rogie had to come up with the big save here. It was just a play that Tommy Bergman was fooled on an outside, inside move. And the Sean looked back. He wasn't sure he'd made the save, but it keeps the wings right in it. Now from the faceoff, Sheenard played it back toward the line, but it's taken away by Bolduck. Then a race pass to Libet. Libet's one and one with Shan. Took a long shot. Lemon and cleared that away. And they have whistled it down because over in the corner there's a battle going on. I believe it is Libet. He is in there with Shan. The two of them in the corner. Libet actually had his back to the glass, or his face to the glass, and his back to Shan. And they were in a mix-up there. Shan is heading in, and Libet will follow him in. And it broke out with a play over on the opposite side. And Nicky Libet is one that doesn't get in fights. Uh, he just minds his business, goes up and down. So while the two of them go in, we'll tell you there's no score in this hockey game, and we'll be back right after we watch this. Let the spirit go! a new excitement in small cars, AMC's new Spirit DL. Sporty looks, corduroy bucket seats, and a sleek instrument panel. American Motors has the Spirit. Let the spirit move you. See all the new AMC cars for 79 at your Metro Detroit AMC dealers. So the Red Wings will get a break on the penalty as Libet picks up two minutes for roughing and Shan two for high sticking and another two minutes for roughing. Now they've changed Libet's penalty and made it high sticking. So each of them get two minutes for high sticking and then Shan an additional two minutes for roughing. The play is going to stay off to the right side of the Atlanta goal each team short a man. Wings will have the odd man if no further penalties occur after the two minutes to be served by Libet. Puck fired down the ice, digging after it, Eric Bale and Huber, and finally with Huber losing the race, Fashan came out to clear it away. It's kept in by McMillan, then sent back out center ice with Sam Leroy. That's McMillan carrying back in. Huber goes into the corner with Bale, tipped it away now. Glockner played it in behind his own goal, and it's... Polonich losing it, then covering up in front of the goal, Willie Huber. Here's Huber's bringing it back out now to center ice. Huber over the line, played it off to the side of the goal. Murdoch goes in after it. Bob Murdoch in behind his own goal. Coming out now with a left side pass to Kia. That's center ice moving with it. That's Pronovo. John Pronovo over the line. Murdoch moving in with him. Glockner ties up Pronovo along the boards. And Polonich takes the loose puck and heads back now for Detroit. A minute five left in the penalty time to Libet. Ronovo took it away, drops it back for Kia. Now Gene Carr. Carr, number 14 of Atlanta. From the blue line with a shot that Huber deflects into the corner. Glockner went in after it, lost it there. Ronovo tried to get a shot away and picking it up behind the net. Polonic. Ronovo was knocked down. The crowd didn't care much for that. Now Polonic takes it over the line. Dumped it in towards the corner, and Stan Leroy was felled into the ice by Fox. Polonich stepped in the car. He's going to get a penalty. Polonich, for some reason, had to stick right up in Carr's face. And on the delayed call, here's Carr taking it over the line. Now Carr sent it back to the blue line. Off to the side of the net when it's played by the wings. Polonich will go off. And so what would have been a Red Wing power play will no longer be. Well, this is a bad penalty by Dennis. So There's Dennis Bowie well, oh. have it right out at center ice with Fox and San Leroy threatening to go at it. Fox really took a piece of St. Leroy, and I think that's what brought Dennis into the play when he brought his stick up high and get a penalty for no doubt it's going to be for high sticking. Just prior to that, I'll tell you that uh, Pronovo was really belted to the ice, too, so it's been going both ways. But I guess tempers have been settled now, and Polonich will head off, and we'll be back with more after we pause now for this. It's special. Ah, that looks really nice and cold. It's special. Uh -huh. Tastes the best special. It's refreshing. Special. I can tell you, it's uh, it's got a Labatt's taste. Yeah. yeah. And it's a real Canadian taste. Has it got body? That's it. It's got body. It's special. Uh -huh. 
And yet it has less than 99 calories in a bottle. Andre St. Laurent goes in and he tries to go along and, and Fox come in and really got a piece of him along the boards. And you watch Dennis Bonnage comes in and he gets a stick up real high, his elbow, and winds up getting a penalty. It's a, like a little chop up over the shoulders, but that's a penalty that had to be called and uh, the wings now are gonna have to play shorthanded. Detroit will play two men short and Atlanta one short now for 20 seconds. The time remaining in Libet's penalty. There's a shot by Fox. He didn't get much on it. It's deflected into the corner. Paul Woods went in after it, failed to work it out. Sent back out in front, going after it, Ribble. Now back along the point, Lalonde, he drove a shot past John Meals on it after making the save. And the play will stay in the Detroit zone. And six seconds remaining in Libet's penalty, then he'll be out. And each team will remain short of men. Surprisingly, that he elected to shoot from back there. there uh, they didn't get the screen out in front of Rogi. He makes the save and then just puts his pad down on it, too. But the shot was from 45, 50 feet away, and uh, it wasn't that difficult. Base off stays in the circle to the left of the Detroit goal. Now it's Dale McCord. He'll go in against Lalonde. Buck went into the corner. Lalonde went in after it. Shoved in along the board. They still play it back out center ice. Lippitt is back on, and now each team is short one man. Back at his own blue line, Pronobo handed it off to Ribble. Perry Miller has been playing left wing, is back along the defense now. This is Lalonde into the Detroit zone. Each team short one man, they're at even strength. Lalonde into the corner, being watched by Tommy Bergman. Bounced in along the boards by Bergman. And then that is Fox that reached in and took it away. Vashon in behind his own goal. Handing it off now to Dale McCord, he's turned. In behind his net a second time is Tommy Bergman over on the left side now to Miller, ahead to Libet. Now Nick Libet with McCourt. Libet pulls up, dropped it all way behind Tommy Bergman, and Miller has to hustle back after it. 50 seconds remaining in the Detroit penalty, then the wings for 20-some seconds will have the extra man. Barry Miller over on the right side to Nedimanski. Nedimanski went around Vail, fired the shot, and Lemelin came up with a good save on a good move by Nedimanski. That's McMillan with the beard, playing it in behind his own goal. Murdoch hands it back to him. Now moving out center ice, Bob McMillan hands it off to Eric Vail. Murdoch on the right side, the two of them over the line. Murdoch, his pass went off the skate of Tommy Bergman. Nedimanski has it. Here now, Big Ned moving his way back out center ice. 15 seconds left in Polonich's penalty. Turning at center ice now. Nedimanski giving it to Dale McCord. He lost it. McMillan starts right back. Over the line with a shot, and Vashon grabs that and holds a rebound. McMillan digging right in on top of him. And a mistake again, that time by McCord out at center ice was very dangerous. Bruce, it's a funny thing. Every time the wings do make a, an error, the other club just seems to jump on loose pucks and gets, you know, wind up getting a real good scoring opportunity. Bashan had to come up with a glove save and then jump on the puck as it bounced out of his glove. One second left in Polonich's penalty. Then Detroit will have the extra man for 23 seconds. A little debris on the ice back along the Detroit blue line. Super Six Tire Centers brings you moments to remember. Who are the two former Red Wings who scored over a thousand points in their National Hockey League careers? I can name several that didn't. <laughs> well, we'll have the answer for you a little later on in the telecast. Face off to the right of the Detroit goal. Now Polonich back on. Detroit has the extra man. Puck came back to the line. Murdoch took the shot. That's blocked by Jean Hamel, who just sweeps it out center ice. And 15 seconds remain in the penalty. The second of the two to Dave Shand. And the wings are deep in their own zone. No score in the hockey game as Polonich heads out center race. Shand is coming back on now, and the teams are both at full strength. Drop pass for Reed Larson. He fired it into the corner. It'll be John Hamel hustling back after it. But the play coming back out center ice, and Hamel backhands it right back in. Again, it's off to the side of the net. Ed Kia goes after it. Kia, good quick pass ahead to Gould. John Gould dumping it out center ice zone, and here's McMillan ripping in after it. McMillan. He put it right through the goal crease, and Flett was digging in, but failed to get to it. Puck came right back to Willie Flett. He dumped it into the corner, going in after it, Reed Larson. Now Larson lifts it in the air. It's taken there by Kia. San Laurent bumped him. Play goes back into the Detroit zone with Larson in after it. Now John Hamel. 
Played over on the left side at center ice. It bounced over the stick of San Laurent. Played back on the left side. Filipov cleared it back into the Detroit zone again. And again, Vashon came out of the net. He went all the way into the corner. Played it along the board. It's taken away. A shot fired way wide by Lawrence. Another one out in front. Knocked away off a skate. Going after it, Danny LeBratton. Now LeBratton coming out center ice. His pass steered away. And it's Atlanta with the pressure on. Flat. Played it over on the right side. Lawrence took it in. It's knocked back out center ice by Glockner. And the play whistled down. We played seven minutes, one second of a scoreless first period. And there's a fellow, Sid, who's going to be joining you between the first and second periods live from here in our telecast well, location. Well, you know, Bobby was in the series back in 76, uh, Team Canada, I guess it was mm -hmm. called. He was an assistant coach with Scotty Bowman. And I thought, we just discussed the selection this year of the uh, big series that's coming up in New York starting next week and uh, talk over about just how do you play against the Russians. Bobby's a pretty frustrated guy this season. He's done everything in the world trying to get things straightened out and every little mistake seems to cost. Now Dennis Fallon has cleared it not out. That shot by Brad Marsh fired just wide and the rebound itself came all the way back to the Atlanta blue line. Cleared by Shan back to Marsh center ice to Philipoff over on the right side Willie Flett digging in. Here's Flett with a shot. Bashan came out, cut the angle, knocked it away. Glockner in behind his own goal. Took a heavy bump there from Filipov. And Atlanta's doing the bumping right now. That's Filipov who went into Polonich going in behind his own goal, San Laurent. He dropped it off there. Lori Glockner starts back for the wing. Willie Huber sending it out center ice. San Laurent drops it off for LeBratton over the line. Danny LeBratton trying to work around Shand. He took the shot. Lemelin actually missed it, but it went wide of the goal. They take it in along the boards. It's held there. And a face-off will stay in the Atlanta zone. And again, we have a little rough stuff going on. Polonich is off to the right side. It was San Laurent who was in the middle of it. And working on him, I believe, was Brad Marsh. You know, Lemelin misplayed the shot by LeBratton. It went through his glove, but he just just got enough of it to turn it so that it wouldn't go on the net. Could have very well have been a goal. Uh, the Wings are playing a very, very cautious first seven minutes. See, Lennon, Lennon actually misplayed that entirely, but he got a piece of it and he got it by the short side. But the no. Wings are playing up and down very, very close. Very erect to the live action now. The play over the Detroit line. Ken Houston is on for the first time. Failed to handle it. It came back out center ice. That's Houston turning with it. Right back into the Detroit zone. Pulling up along the blue line. Houston dumping it into the corner. Pronovo went in after it. He was dumped behind the goal by Bolduck, but he's down on top of the puck. And they'll bring it out over the Detroit blue line for the faceoff. We've played now 8 minutes 20 seconds of the first period and still no score. They post the shots and goal as they go along, which shows Atlanta 4 and Detroit 3. Bruce, we may mention, too, the fact that the Wings lost in the third period yesterday after playing a, a terrific second period. Bobby Crom had a meeting with the team that he just fired to coming out, and no doubt he went over positional play because the Wings are not playing just helter-skelter. They're going up and down their wings. They, it looks as though they're, they're going to try and check their men for a certain time before they try and open up at all. Now Tommy Bergman playing it off to Reed Larson. It comes out to Paul Woods, moving out center ice. Right. Bolduck on the right side, took it over the line. Woods was dumped as he got to the blue line. And a scramble along the boards. It comes out to Ribble. Pat Ribble playing it out center ice right to Bobby Lalonde. He's got Houston with him, the two of them over the line. Lalonde was dumped to the ice by Reed Larson. Now this is Bolduck. Danny Bolduck clearing it to Libet. That pass covered two lines. It's offside, and they'll come back inside the Detroit blue line for the faceoff. So while they come back, we will pause now for this. What do you get with your interest from most banks when you deposit money? Next. What do you get with your interest when you deposit money in Bank of the Commonwealth? I got a piano. I got a piano. I got these tools. I got a watch. At Bank of the Commonwealth, when you deposit as little as $1,000 in a seven-year, 7% 7 time certificate, you'll not only earn big interest, but also a big bonus, some bigger than others. Trying hardest to help. That's the Bank of the Commonwealth. 
Bruce Martin, Sid Abel, our director, Marvin Hughes, with you from here in Atlanta, where the Detroit Red Wings and the Atlanta Flames have played just short of nine minutes of a scoreless first period, though the Flames have carried the play. There's a quick shot by McMillan. That bounced off the glass, came off to the side of the net. Laurie Glockner brings it out. Out on the right side to Huber, back out center ice. A pass too far for McCourt. And there'll be an icing. No, it was touched by the goaltender, so the icing waved off. And in behind his own goal is Murdoch. Now Bob Murdoch. Playing it out on the right wing to Guy Chouinard. He's having himself quite a season. He's got 29 goals on the year, and that's more than he's ever had in his National Hockey League career. Dale McCourt knocked it away, but it's picked up by Murdoch, who swings it into the Detroit zone. In behind his own goal, Netamansky. Netamansky's pass skips off the stick of Perry Miller, and Ed Kia will lift it into the air and bounce it right back into the Detroit zone as Glockner played it out on the left wing for Miller. Long right side pass. Here's Netamansky with McCourt trailing. Netamansky over the line. He went around Kia, put it right through the goal mouth. Nobody there. A chance for Glockner. A weak shot, and that deflected off to the side of the net. Huber with the shot. That's right on, and Lemelin made the save. McCourt goes after it in the corner, but he's checked right there, and it's taken away by Murdoch. McMillan kicked it out to center ice. Goes after it himself. Now here's Bob McMillan over the line into the Detroit zone. Moved out in front with a shot. He scores. And like that, Atlanta leads it one to nothing. You know, we always say mistakes cause goals. Here's a case where Gail McCourt could have made a play along the boards. Gail McCourt just let his man go. He picks up the other wingman, doesn't pay any attention to McMillan at all. McMillan makes a real good move. Then he shot it right along the ice, just inside the post to beat Rogie Bashan. This kid's having a terrific year. He has 50 assists, leading the league in assists. This is his 74th point and his 24th goal, so... Uh, an unassisted goal to McMillan at 10 minutes and 8 seconds. There's a play that started very innocently along the boards. Dale McCord elected to play the wingman that wasn't going to get into the play. Well, McCord actually was closer to the puck yes, than McMillan, than McMillan was. McMillan was. Should have made the play on it. He just rather nonchalantly moved after it. And this is what happens, Bruce. The, the wings are being beaten to loose pucks time and time again. Now Shan, number 8. Clearing it along the boards on the right side, it bounced back to Tommy Bergman. He fired a shot way wide. Going in after it, John Gould. McMillan's 24th goal of the season, unassisted at 10.08. one nothing Atlanta. Buck goes in behind the Detroit net. Vashon stops it there. He lost it. The puck came right out in front. And Filipoff was there, but failed to get to it. Rather than Filipoff, it was uh, Gene Carr. That shot from the blue line knocked away by Vashon. Now big John Hillworth cleared it too far for... Detroit's Greg Carroll, he was knocked flying into the corner, Reed Larson. Larson put it right out in front of the net. Billy LaHead clears it off to the right side. Hillworth is playing up on the right wing, rolls it into the Atlanta zone. Lemelin came out of the net. His pass knocked down in the corner, but it's John Gould going after it. Clearing it out center ice, Tommy Bergman hands it there to Reed Larson, and Larson golfs it back in. Chen, number eight, turning in behind his own goal for the Flames. 8.45 to go in the first period, 1-0 Atlanta. Now this is Brad Marsh. Marsh, he was stopped right at the line by Hillworth. They jam it in along the boards. The puck came loose back into the Detroit zone and heading back after this Carroll. Atlanta changing on the move as Greg Carroll swings it out on the left side for Billy Lahad. He was knocked down by Houston. Heading in after it again is Shan. Atlanta moving out of their own zone. Here now, Dave Shan shooting it into the corner, deep in the Detroit zone. Hillworth goes in after it, dumped it into the corner. Reed Larson played it along the board, and San Laurent couldn't work by Ribble. So Larson covers up, cleared it over on the left side to Perry Miller. Miller was just about hauled down by Fox. Here's Lalonde with it. Bobby Lalonde back on the line to Ribble. Turned around by Hillworth, and Hillworth got it out center ice. He squeezed off the puck there, and Fox cleared it back out center ice. Lalonde has it over on the left side to Pronovo. Ronovo fired the shot wide. LeBratton, he's hemmed in along the board by Houston, who took a run at him. In behind the goal, Lalonde. San Laurent knocked it away. The play is loose behind the Detroit goal. Flames have it right there. The glove came off, and now here's a battle going on. Kenny Houston and Perry Miller, and the two linesmen move in very quickly, and that started rather innocently off to the side of the Detroit goal, but Miller, I guess, decided he'd had enough. 
So the two linesmen are in between them and the referee standing right there taking a look at it all. And still the two of them remain at rather close quarters. And you can see Houston. Houston made his first move in the National Hockey League in Atlanta uniform when he took on Dave Schultz when Schultz was the killer of the league and uh, sent him to the ice. So they'll move in and there's a pause in the action with a score one nothing Atlanta and we'll be back in a moment. Hazard is having a million dollar year end clearance sale. Get super savings now at all of our locations. You'll save big. Now, Martin sunroofs for trucks and vans are just $69.95. Van spoiler and flare kits are just $89.95. And save on thrush mufflers, now as low as $16.95. Gratiot is having a million dollar year end clearance sale. Get super savings now at all of our locations. You'll save big. Pass it on. Save on tires, wheels, and more, including the newest location in Canton. This play starts very innocently, this penalty. Uh, Miller goes around behind the net. It's a surprising thing. The puck was left behind the net. Reed Larson doesn't go back to make a play on the puck at all. He's standing out in front of the net. And first thing you know, Houston and Miller are tangled, and they both take a few good swings. In fact, Miller connected with a Atlanta couple of right good now. ones. Miller also won in the penalty department. He picked up four minutes. Two, well, two uh, roughing penalties. See, this is a surprising thing about hockey. Uh, now, that to me would be a fight where they're both swinging, they both connect, and yet it's not, they call it fighting, I guess, and they both get, uh, they both get, well, Houston gets two, Miller gets four. Houston did not want to go into the penalty box. He was trying all the way across the ice to get back at Miller, and you can see him, he's still jabbing away at him in the penalty box. But there are three or four people in between them. So the face off will take place off to the left side of the Detroit goal, each team short a man. And then if we have no more penalties, Houston will come back in two minutes and Miller will have another two to be served. Face off to the left of the Detroit goal, Paul Woods. Won the draw, played it into the corner. Going in after it, Reed Larson dumped it ahead, Libet gloved it, it went up into the crowd. Hey, hockey fans, during this break in the action, just say, I'd rather Verners. Whatever you do, don't get caught with your Verners down. They saw off the rim of the circle in the Detroit zone. That shot by Fox went wide. Taken off the side of the net, it's jammed right up to the goal mouth and ended up behind the net a second time as Atlanta came close. John Pronovo was swinging away at it. He generally in the right spot at the right time and he was again and it's a pretty good grip on him by Tommy Bergman finally Vashon cleared it to the other side Fox holds it in there squeezed off the puck by Paul Woods Woods is dealt to the ice here now Larson coming out with Libet Nick Libet cleared it over on the left side Woods takes it over the line heads toward the corner Red Lawrence knocked it away from him Fox in behind his own goal Taken in along the boards by Paul Woods. That puck is still loose. Finally, it's jammed to the back of the net, and the play stopped. That'll keep the play in the Atlanta zone. And each team remains short of men. Paul Woods. He's a worker. Yes, he, uh, Paul Woods is a real hustle fella, a skater. Uh, Rogi Vashan just about made the mistake a goaltender should never make. A puck that come off the boards. These boards appear much deader than uh, boards in Detroit. The puck comes back on the short side. That comes right back out the front of the net. Vashan is turned around facing the back boards. And the puck come out and eluded him and then went right across through the open goal mouth. And Pronovo, who is a goal scorer, was standing on the other side and he couldn't put it in the empty net. Now the face off of the circle to the right of the Atlanta goal. It came back to the line. Huber with a shot. Lemelin blocked it, and the puck just lay out in front, but Bolduck was all covered up by Kia. Murdoch moving back over the line into the Detroit zone. Bob Murdoch, and the play whistled down. And the face off out over the Detroit line on the offside. You can win a $50 gift certificate in the Acme Red Wing prize drawing. Watch for tonight's winner between the first and second periods. Acme, where they have more, and they have it for less. A minute and one second remaining in the penalty to Houston, and that means Miller has another two minutes beyond that, 301. You look there at John D'Amico. He worked in his 1,000th National Hockey League game as a linesman yesterday at Olympia Stadium. Larry Glockner clearing it off on the right side to Huber. At center ice, Dale McCourt. McCourt handed it back to Glockner. 
Now to Nedimansky, and he was checked before he could get through by Lawrence. Kia played it too far for Gould. That's going down the ice. They waved off the icing, and first man there is Gould anyway. Going into the corner after it, Dale McCourt playing it on the left right side for Nedimansky. Now Nedimansky drops it back for McCourt. It went behind him. Huber has it. Willie Huber to Glockner. To Dale McCourt checked right at the line. Now it's Huber again, and Willie finally just dumps it in. Buck took a funny bounce in behind the net. Played by Lamelin, and it's cleared ahead to John Gould. Now Lawrence. Over on the right side, Murdoch into the Detroit zone. Nedimansky came back, knocked it away, but then Lawrence picked it up the second time. Goes in behind the goal. Nedimansky still bothering him, and Huber finally took him in along the boards. Lawrence still battling to control the puck. Huber had a pretty good grip on him. John Gould. And still it's Atlanta that seems to want control. Dale McCourt finally picked it up, and here now is Huber coming out. Willie Huber, penalty is over to Houston now, and Atlanta will have the extra man. The play went into the flame zone offside. So we'll be back in just a moment. When you own a trans van, you have to get used to all the room inside, like the carpeted dining area with thick cushioned seats and removable tables. <laughs> The sleeping area has large, comfortable sofa beds covered with stylish fabrics, ample closet space, too, and the stand-up kitchen has an ice box, stainless steel sink, roomy drawers, and plenty of cupboards. The versatile trans van from Champion. Say, maybe your next car shouldn't be a car. See the new trans van at Arrowhead Chrysler Dodge and Macomb Chrysler Plymouth. Face-off will take place just over the Atlanta Flames blue line. Paul Woods, Nick Lippett out as penalty killers. And they continue to wait. Now from the faceoff, Alon won the draw, cleared it back into his own zone. Guy Chouinard handing it now to Eric Vail. Moving out with it now is Lalonde. Five forwards on the power play for Atlanta. It went into the corner. Tommy Bergman didn't get it out. Here's McMillan coming right in. And he scores. And now it is two to nothing on the power play. McMillan, who gloved that puck, knocked it down. Will have another unassisted goal, I believe. No, he made the pass over. He, he oh, passed it a little. Yep, yep, yep. Lalonde scored the goal. A beautiful play right in front of Vachon. But here is a case where the Wings, no doubt, because of a meeting today, were playing strictly defensive hockey and playing it well. They, Tommy Bergman just tries to flip the puck out. He flips it right to McMillan. McMillan goes in and watch a little short yep. pass here. He goes to pull, pulls Vachon one way, takes a perfect pass to Lalonde, and Lalonde puts it in the, the side that Vachon had just vacated. You can't blame Rogi Vachon for a play like that. It was just a case where the wings were trying to be too careful. And Tommy Bergman comes up with a just a glaring error by a defenseman. So Bobby Lalonde draws the goal on the pass from McMillan. At first, I think from McMillan, our vantage point, looked like it might have gone in the net. I think McMillan could have scored the goal, but when he pulled Vachon over to the side, he just laid the, part, the puck right back over the open side to Lalonde, and Lalonde tucked it in. So the play goes back into the Atlanta zone. The Flames in after it. Cleared back. Reed Larson let a shot go. Lemelin knocks that away. Played in behind the net. Kept in there by San Leroy. Brought it right out in front. And the wings just failed to get to it. And Lemelin grabs it again and holds on. Bobby Lalonde gets his 17th goal of the season on a perfect setup from McMillan. And probably the smallest hockey player. Here's, here's a case where Andre St. Laurent tried to tuck it in as he came around behind the net. The goaltender made a big save on it because he didn't take any chances on a loose puck. With Ponich parked right out in front, he just grabbed it and uh, caused the faceoff. Gord shows the wings out shooting Atlanta, 8-7 and seven at this stage. Now San Laurent's pass to Polonich, another shot, and it's blocked down in front. Polonich went digging after it, put it off to the side of the net. Here's Danny LeBratton with it. LeBratton put it right out in front, but that's cleared away. Over along the boards, Larson tipping it into the corner to San Laurent. Didn't get there, though. Brad Marsh broke it up. Marsh cleared it ahead to Sheenard. Off on the right side. This is McMillan again. McMillan went right out in front, and it was fast Sean that swept it away. Now LeBratton's pass. San Laurent, now Polonich. Polonich dropped it off for San Laurent. The play over the line, but broken up right there by Sheenard. San Laurent took it away from him. 
sets up Polonich. Polonich never got a shot away. Now Marsh goes chasing into the corner, dumps it to the opposite side. Harold Filipoff has it there. Filipoff bringing it back out. He's checked right at the line. Chouinard turns at his own blue line. Three and a half minutes to go in the first period. Two nothing. Detroit Trail. This is Danny Bolduck winding up for a shot. Marsh stopped that before it got through. Bolduck sent it back toward the line, but the pass broken up. Paul Woods got a stick on it, brings it out center ice. Sends it back now to Willie Huber over on the left side. John Hamel. Buck is cleared in behind the Atlanta goal. Emelin missed it back there, but Marsh covered up. Filipoff cleared it away from Hamel down the right side. Over the line, that's Willie Flett. Flett put it right out in front, but it was Paul Woods that came back and stopped that. Willie Huber in behind his own goal. Now Huber moving it out to center ice. Over the line into the Atlanta zone. Huber, he centered it, and again, the Flames are right there. There's going to be a penalty coming up to Atlanta. As the Red Wing player Livid is head first into the net, and he was sent there by Willie Plutt, I believe it is. So while the penalty is called and the Red Wings will have the power play, we'll be back in just a moment. Will the owner of the AMC Concord please move it? Concord. Why is American Motors Concord such a success? Value. Because the AMC Concord DL is a compact that comes with its luxury extras at no extra charge. Luxuries like a Landau roof, crushed velour seats, digital clock, and a smooth, quiet ride. What is this? Everyone owns a Concord? 1979 AMC Concord, the new American success story. Face off will be the rim of the circle to the left side of the Atlanta goal. Flat is off for interference with the time of the call, 17 minutes and 14 seconds, and so the wings have the extra man. Willie Huber drove it off to the side of the Atlanta goal. Played in behind his own goal, the pass knocked away by Nick Libet. Libet with a rolling puck, knocks it down. Played it in behind the net, it eluded Paul Woods there. But digging away is Bolduck. Bolduck was sent to the ice, the puck still low is in the Atlanta zone, in behind the net. Now it's cleared along the boards, and it's sent out center ice. Reed Larson takes it there. Paul Woods. Woods turning. Woods handing it to Larson. He got it to the line. That's all. Bolduck will try. And Bolduck just swings it into the corner. Lemelin has it there. Ed Kia playing it out on the left side. And Bobby Lalonde swings it down the ace. And the wings with a minute and ten seconds left in the penalty. Haven't had much going thus far. This is Reed Larson waiting for his team to get set. Now starts out. Here's Larson coming out center ice. He dumped it into the corner in the Atlanta zone. Lalonde, the first man there, being chased by Bolduck. And Bobby Lalonde pulled away, feeds it out center ice. John Gould has it there, but Gould's going to just play it back to Ed Kia. Kia over the line, whistled a shot. He fired it wide. Murdoch will hold it in. Now Murdoch dumped it in behind the Detroit goal. The Wings have had no threat thus far on the power play. That's Dale McCourt turned around, lost it to Gould. Gould played it out in front of the Detroit net, so now it'll be Reed Larson trying. Ahead to McCourt, he dropped it back for Nedimanski to McCourt. Over the line, he stopped right there. And Kia took it away from him, cleared it out to John Gould. He tipped it the rest of the way, and 15 seconds remain in the penalty. And the wings have not tested Lemelin. Here's a long pass over two lines and offside. Well, keep in mind that there's a tough race in the Big Ten basketball competition right now, and the Michigan State University Spartans will be meeting the Ohio State Buckeyes in what could be a heck of a basketball game, and it's next Thursday night at 8 o'clock on TV 50. Bobby Crom, who will not be too happy, I guess, will be joining Sid Abel between the first and second periods of this hockey game from here at the Omni in Atlanta. The Flames lead the game 2 to nothing. 57 seconds remaining in the first period. The shot clock reads 8 aside. There is Dale McCourt. McCourt won the draw. This puck failed to come out. Now that's Laurie Glockner with it. He cleared it out center ice, and Fox brought it back in offside. So they'll come right back out to the center ice zone, just over the Detroit blue line for the faceoff. The goals, McMillan unassisted at 10.08, and then on a power play at 15.01, McMillan made the play and set up Lalonde perfectly. And Lalonde tipped it in. He had a Red Wing player with him, but he's got the stick on the pass. And it's 2-0. The 
This is Tommy Bergman. Out on the right side to Nedimanski ahead now to McCourt. Perry Miller. Miller checked right there at center ice. Knocked away from him by Fox. Coming back with it is Lawrence. Out on the right wing. Flat. Well, he put in behind the goal. Tried to center it. Knocked away. Tommy Bergman picks it up. Clears it now to Nedimanski. 25 seconds to go in the period. Nedimanski moving his way out center ice. Dumped it into the Atlanta zone. Going back after it is Red Lawrence. Lawrence bumped in along the boards by Dale McCourt. Now Fox came out and he was dealt to the ice. A good heavy check on the part of Laurie Glockner. Who caught Fox with his head down. The play goes in behind the Atlanta goal. Ribble is in after it. Pat Ribble handing it now to Fox. Fox clearing it out center ice. That'll lead up the rest of the time as the buzzer goes to end the first period. And so from here at Atlanta we have played one period of hockey. With the Detroit Red Wings trailing the Atlanta Flames by a score of two to nothing. your local TV book for a free pizza coupon. Tomorrow night on the 8 o'clock movie, Jerry Lewis is the world's most unfit mother as he babysits for triplets in Rockabye Baby. Something's wrong with this one. It ain't working. <coughs> oh. Do you believe in bottle feeding or do you oh, believe that Oh, the bottle, naturally. <laughs> I think that they're so much easier to rinse out. Rockabye Baby. Tomorrow night on the 8 o'clock movie. Parts Plus, the sign of quality parts, competitively priced, plus the kind of service you can count on. When it comes to protecting your car's engine against rust, corrosion, winter cold, and summer heat, nothing tops peak, nothing. And now you can afford the best. Get two gallons of peak antifreeze and coolant for just $5.99 at your nearest participating Parts Plus auto store. Look for auto stores displaying this sign. Parts Plus, for automotive name brands you trust. Can I offer you a Coke, sir? No. Uh, seven up, some coffee? No. Something a little stronger? No, I'd rather Vernard's. <laughs> no matter what else you got, don't get caught with your Vernard's down. Wherever you're going, it's nice to know Werner's is there. Nothing can replace Werner's mysteriously refreshing taste. Absolutely nothing. Don't get caught with your Werner's down. So we're back here in Atlanta where the Red Wings fell behind 2 to nothing in the first period on the... Goal by McMillan at 10.08, unassisted, and then Lalonde set up on a pretty play again by Bob McMillan at 15.01. That was on the power play. The Atlanta Flames, as you see some of their fans here, are a team, as we mentioned, that have to be maybe the best last place team in the National Hockey League's history. They are actually, at the moment, just one point ahead of Philadelphia. They've been back and forth in that area in the Lester Patrick division. But Atlanta has a record in their 50 games of 26 victories and four ties with 20 losses. Now, that's a total of 56 points, which would have them in second place in the Norris Division, would have them way out in front in the Conn Smythe Division, and in second place in the Adams Division. So they're in a real toughie. Well, a fellow who has been, I am going to say, on the point of frustration more times than not this season, because just about everything they've tried has failed to click, and yet he still gives it at all, is joining Sid Abel right now as we join Sid Abel and his guest, Bobby Crump. You know, Bob, it's tough to talk hockey when the club's not winning. I thought you played a very, very defensive-minded first period, but you still come up with a couple of mistakes to give them goals. Well, that's uh, been our problem, uh, Sid. Uh, we, I thought we played a, a decent first period out there, and uh, we made two mistakes, and it cost us. The other team seems to make a mistake, and I guess that's another thing that plagues us. We aren't able to capitalize maybe on the mistakes that the opposing team makes. You know, on the second goal, Tommy Burden has possession of the puck. Everybody's back actually in position. What makes defensemen cough the puck up like that? He could have, in the old hockey terms, say, eaten the puck, and nothing would have happened. Instead, he just threw it out for grabs. 
Well, uh, Sid, he had it on his backhand, and I think he got away with it a couple times, and he thought he'd get it up again. The ice is a little slower here in Atlanta. And I felt uh, he had lots of time to turn on his forehand and maybe use the boards or put a little uh, uh, beef behind it and right. get it out of our own zone. It was a very bad mistake, and that shouldn't happen in the National Hockey League, but it's happened to us quite often. Well, Bob, there's still 40 minutes to get back in the game. But first of all, you were involved with Team Canada in 1976. Scotty Bowman was the coach. You were an assistant coach. There's a big series coming up starting next week in, in New York. I just want to go through some of the selections here. And, and get your opinion. Start with the goaltenders. According to the balloting, Tony Esposito has been picked as the goaltender to start this game. Do you feel that is a good selection? Well, Tony's played very well over the years for Chicago, and I'm sure he is very responsible a lot of the time for sh keeping Chicago in there. But I do uh, feel that they have uh, uh, good goaltenders selected, but I, I still feel that there's a couple of young fellows around the league, like uh, who I think Gilles Malash is one of the best goaltenders in, in the league, although. Uh, statistics don't bear me out, but uh, he's never had uh, the horses or the team in front of him, but he's an excellent goaltender, and uh, uh, these fellas seem to know what they're doing, so I really can't knock their goaltender. All right, now, Dryden's been picked, Cheevers has been picked, and Rush. You know, a couple of weeks ago, we played in Boston. There was an article in the paper where Cheevers come out and said, the morning of the 5th of February, he says, I'm heading for Florida. He says, because I have horses running at Gulfstream, and I'll be at Gulfstream Park to see my horses run. Yet, he is one of the goaltenders. Well, I think uh, they've straightened that out. I'm sure they wouldn't have selected him without approaching Jerry and seeing if he would be available. And I think he was disappointed that if he got selected this time that he sat with the towel around his neck in the Team Canada series right. as Rogi Vashon, who plays uh, spectacular in that particular series and should have been uh, at that time selected the most valuable player. All right, now we'll go to the defenseman. I don't think there's a mistake here. Larry Robinson and Dennis Potvin were the first two defensemen. No, no question about it. They're the two premier defensemen in the National League. Probably a surprise, uh, I would say. Ian Turnbull has been picked, and Gary Sargent, Minnesota. Well, uh, I think so, uh, Sid, but I think they selected uh, 32 players due to the fact that uh, if they didn't select 32 players, that uh, they selected their choice, and there was a uh, two or three injuries, that uh, other players might have made plans, you know, in this break on starting right. in February, that they would say, no way, that I've made plans already, I wasn't selected, and I'm on my way to Florida or to uh, California, right. wherever. They can only dress, what, 25? Well, no, they can't dress 25. Uh, they must have a oh, roster, they have of, 25. Uh, roster of 25 players, and I still think myself that is too much just for a three-game series. All right, now we'll go to center ice. Bobby Clark over Brian Trutchett. Well, Bobby Clark, uh, he is a money player in a series like that. Bobby Clark will shine because he plays with tremendous effort, desire, and he's very knowledgeable about the game. And uh, uh, because they picked Bobby Clark, Brian Troche will be there, I'm sure, right. and uh, he'll be playing like Brian Troche can. All right, right side, no mistake here, Guy Lafleur. Oh, no question. He's uh, the premier hockey player today. And young Mike Bossy has been picked. Well, I would have to go along with that. He, he's played well with uh, Troche, and I'm sure Gillies will be with him, and that line is probably the most productive line in the National Hockey League. So, Bossy proved last year he can score goals, and this year he's uh, in the 30s, and it's uh, close to 40, and uh, again, he's proving that he can put the puck in the net. One more right winger, a kid that's playing out here today that scored a goal and set up beautifully, Lalonde. Uh, Bobby McMillan? Yes, Bobby's having a fantastic year, and what a... Well, what a trade for the Atlanta Flames right. acquiring him. He's just coming into his own, and he comes to play here in Atlanta, and has just been outstanding for the Atlanta Flames. All right, on the left side, Steve Shuck. I think Steve belongs there. He, in that type, particular type of series, he can skate, and he can score goals, and he can check. So I think they're going to need that kind of hockey player. Now, uh, a surprise to me, Bob, and, and uh, you have to coach against him, Don Marcott from Boston is one of the players selected, whether he'll be the, on the final 25 or not. On the left side, Shutt, Ganey, Gillies, Barber, and Marcotte. Well, I don't think Bar Marcotte, when the final analysis and decision is made, said I don't think Marcotte will be there, and I don't think he qualifies to be there. All right, now we have the team. There's 32 players. They're going to go with 25. How do you play against the Russians? Well, uh, Sid, we're going to have to play our way uh, in a three-game series with only two or three days to practice. I don't think we can change the way we play against them. I just feel that they have to plug the middle because they, they like to stay away from the boards. That's not their game. They don't like the physical contact on the boards. And if you plug the middle and uh, play our game, I think we will beat them. Now, every year that we play against the Russian team, they always say the National League team hasn't had the, the proper 
conditioning or whatnot. The Russians are always in shape, and it's like at the end of a year or before the season starts. Here we are playing them midway through. We have no alibis this year. No question about it. There's no crutch to lean on in saying that we're not playing them at the proper time. Our players now are in uh, peak condition. They're playing uh, over half the season. They should be ready to play, and uh, I think uh, that uh, they have to uh, be prepared, regardless uh, whether they like to play the games or not. It's now uh, going into effect, and I think uh, the pride and the, prestige, uh, the league prestige is at stake, and uh, I think when they drop the puck, the players will be there. Bob, I'm glad to hear that. Thanks ever so much for stopping by. Get down to the room. Give your players another little talk and see if you can come out and turn this thing around. Eh? Thank you, Sid. Very good. Now let's go back to Bruce Martin. Okay, Sid, and thank you, Bobby, for making that long trip up here, and he'll be heading back to the dressing room right now, and we're about five and a half, six minutes away from the start of the second period with a score, two to nothing, Atlanta. Many of our guests, Bobby included, receive a $100 gift certificate from Cousins Clothiers, where fit has been foremost for over 50 years. We're midway between the first and second periods from here at the Omni in Atlanta, and we'll be back with more after we pause now for this. United presents more non-stops to California than any other airline. Take him away, maestro. We built the largest airline in the free world. Around you, my friends, by the friendly stars. Now on the ice, the Detroit Standard Dealers Sports Club, giving their support to Greater Detroit and our own Detroit professional team. They may not be pros on skates, but they sure are at offering you quality standard service for your car. What do you say, guys? Come on out and support the standard dealers and our team. Ah, the endless possibilities of Peshki Meats and your imagination. Imagine putting crisp slices of that sweet, lean Peshki bacon on a toasted English muffin. Add a poached egg, a slice of American cheese, broiled, and you've got Peshki Bacon Benedict. Your imagination makes it possible. Peshki makes it perfect. Peshki makes it perfect, because Peshki really cares. Now there's a snowmobile that deep snow can't sink. Kawasaki's new drifter with a special chassis that bites deep as snow can get to give you trailblazing performance. Kawasaki Drifter's an awful lot of snowmobile for not an awful lot of money. Kawasaki Drifter. See it at your Kawasaki dealer. Kawasaki lets the good times roll. Let's the good times roll. Well, prior to the start of tonight's telecast, we reached into the barrel and drew out another card for the Acme Red Wing hockey drawing. And the winner of the $50 gift certificate is Gladys Noyce from Allen Park. We congratulate you, Gladys. Sid, uh, we watched 20 minutes of hockey. The Red Wings trail at 2 to nothing. I know that you and Bobby talked a little bit about the first period, but it's that old bugaboo again. I guess I might as well bring it up. The Red Wings commit what I'm going to say are two little mistakes. Uh, Dale McCourt and Tommy Bergman and bang. I wouldn't call them little, Bruce. Well, Two glaring good. mistakes, and the wings have been well, doing Well, they're not glaring unless you score. Right, but the wings have been doing this all season long. When the other team makes mistakes, the wings can't jump on it and capitalize. When the wings make a mistake, boy, oh boy, it doesn't matter what club they're playing against, they just jump on it and score goals. Tommy Bergman's was definitely a mistake a defenseman, an experienced defenseman, should never make. He should have eaten the puck. He's in against the boards. He's on his backhand, as Bobby mentioned. Why he would turn around and just flip it out into the open part of the arena and in his own zone, but he put it right to McMillan. McMillan made a terrific play, and this, this shows why this kid's having a good year. He went in, he, I think he could have scored the goal himself. Yeah, he, right, pulled Rogi, he, first, he pulled Rogie Bashan, had the, the net to put it in, then made the play back to Bobby Lalonde, and Lalonde scores. And McMillan's leading the league in assists, and that proves he knows what he's doing. Atlanta's been a team that, uh, well, the talk around is if you can outskate them, you can perhaps beat them because they're not uh, that fast a hockey club. But I'll tell you, when McMillan took the puck away deep in the Detroit end, there was nobody caught him. Bobby, for 
Bobby McMillan, he can skate, but it's a funny thing. They are not a good skating hockey club, and Detroit is known as a skating club. I thought the Wings probably were a little too cautious. Bobby Crom met with the players before the game. No doubt he talked about positional play and uh, stop making mistakes, just go up and down and wait for a break. Well, now they've got to go away from that game plan because they're down two. They've got to start carrying the play to Atlanta now and hope to get back in the game. They can't win a hockey game by just sitting back in their own zone and letting the other club come to them. Well, the Red Wings continue to play without uh, three players that they were hoping to have this season. One of them will be back Thursday night. We'll be talking a little bit more about that as the hockey game continues. We're at the end of the first period now with a score two to nothing. The Atlanta Flames leading Detroit. We'll be back with the second period action in just a moment. The new trans van by Champion is shorter than this car, has more room than this van, and costs less than this station wagon. Yet this trans van sleeps up to four and oh, even right. includes a kitchen. Lunch is ready. Oh, terrific. John, presenting the Traffic Jam Burger. The amazing new trans van by Champion. Maybe your next car shouldn't be a car. See the new trans van at Ken Brown Dodge and Tamaroff Buick Opel. Isn't it incredible how your tableware seems to disappear? No matter how often you replace it, there's never enough to match or go around. Now at Bank of the Commonwealth, when you put money into your savings, you can put Oneida Stainless on your table. So you collect Oneida, and your money collects interest. Trying hardest to help. That's the Bank of the Commonwealth. Deposit this at the bank, Beach, and we'll need another place setting for the ambassador. Yes, madam. Sean, who is in the Detroit goal. Eight shots for each of the two teams in that first period. But Atlanta scored the only two goals. And the Detroit Red Wings trail going into the second period of action. Both teams are at full strength. From the faceoff, that's Lori Glockner back at his own blue line. Cleared it beyond Netamansky. Down the ice it goes and a quick icing call as back to get it as Ribble. So they'll bring the play back into the Detroit zone. Matt Ribble, he's a pretty tough cookie. He's a big boy and uh, comes to play. Uh, probably not the smoothest looking defenseman, but uh, he does his job and uh, will knock people down. So they hold the face off to the left side of the Detroit goal. The wings of Dale McCord, Perry Miller on the left wing, and Nedemansky on the right side, Glockner and Huber. That's Red Lawrence in against McCord, playing behind the Detroit goal. Glockner dumps it back of the net, and Willie Huber digs back after it. Huber, the good move away from Lawrence, comes out now center ice. On the left wing, that's Perry Miller who wrapped it into the Atlanta zone. Lemelin playing it off now to Ripple. Turning his man around was Huber, but following up now, it's cleared out center ice. Nedemansky has it there. Over on the left side, Dale McCord. He lost it, it's taken away now, and moving back with it is Flett. Willie Flett at center ice, went around Glockner into the Detroit zone, drops it off for Lawrence, who sailed it over the top of the goal. That puck is in the back of the net, and they'll stop the play and bring the face off out over the Detroit blue line. And talk about sailed it over his head. That puck was really moving. It would have taken Rogie Vachon right back up, too. A little drop pass here, and let me tell you all the wood on this shot, and it just goes over the top bar. You see Rogie duck because it was head high. So they'll bring the play over the Detroit blue line, and now it's Paul Woods with Livid and Bolduck, Reed Larson and Tommy Bergman. From the face-off, Lalonde winning the draw, cleared it to the Detroit zone. Bergman hands it off now to Larson. Larson sent it out center ice. Bolduck has Woods going over the line. It skipped away from him. Dave Shan cleared it to Houston. Now moving after it, Lalonde being chased by Woods. They take it in along the boards. A pass came out to Shand. Here's Dave Shan trying to center it. Larson tied him up. In behind the goal, it's held to the back of the net. The play will stay this time in the Detroit end. 
We played a minute 12 seconds to the second period. Bruce, it's surprising down here in Atlanta that there are so many Detroit people either vacationing or come down just for a hockey game. Mike and Marsha Elson, Ben and Elsie Slowinski from, well, actually, they're from Toledo. They uh, stopped by, and they're, they're Red Wing fans for many, many Season years. Season ticket holders. They Season drive in holders. for the Detroit game. Wings try to work it out. They do. Here now, Nick Libet coming with it. Bolduck over on the right side. Took it over the line. Went around Marsh into the corner. Pronovo goes in after it, though. And John Pronovo wears the C as the Atlanta captain, clearing it out on the right wing for Houston. Houston sent it out center ice. He's checked right there, but it's taken by Shand. That's Houston number six. He's the big guy. Bolduck knocked it away from him. Danny Bolduck on a one-man rush got it over the line. No, didn't get it over the line. He went over, but the puck stayed behind. Now it's Shand handing it off to Lalonde. Bobby Lalonde carrying it into the Detroit zone. Went around Tony Bergman. Took it off into the corner. Played it right out in front. And Dennis Polonis tipped it away. Buck dug out of the corner, though, by Houston, right out in front, and Lalonde's shot was blocked by Tommy Bergman. Nick Livett and Shan bump, and the puck came loose. Here's Woods after it. Paul Woods down the boards on the left side, moving in now to the Atlanta zone. He dropped it off for Reed Larson, whose shot was blocked by Lalonde. Now Houston moves back for Atlanta. Into the Detroit zone, trying to go through. He's held off the puck by Jean Hamel. Coming back with it now is Larson. A left side pass, LeBratton. He's turned away by Vale. Play comes back into the Detroit zone. That's McMillan going in after it. Put it right out in front and went right through the skates of Chinard. And the shot by Murdoch deflected in behind the goal. McMillan. He put it out in front again. Here's Chinard to Vale. Oh, and he's fanned on a perfect setup on a pretty passing play. The wings, LeBratton has lost his stick. He kicked the puck to the line, but not out. In behind his own goal now, Larson. He's going to ice the puck. That'll take it the length of the ice. And there'll be a pause in the action, and we shall be back in just a moment. I ain't going up that hill. No way. Off-road is fun, but sometimes you run into an obstacle that only a true four-wheel drive vehicle can handle. A Jeep CJ will give it a try. The Jeep CJ, built rugged, tough, and tailor-made for terrain like this. It's easy to see the Jeep CJ was born and bred for four-wheeling. And there's even options like automatic transmission and a hard top. Top that. That was fun. The Jeep CJ. <laughs> we wrote the book on four-wheel drive. Coach Freddie Creighton of the Atlanta Hockey Club uh, doing a tremendous job with this team. They're in a battle for last place, really, but with a lot of points. They've won 26 games already this year. There's Mass Sean making a good quick save. Buck taken into the corner by Jean Amel. Off to the right side, Dennis Polonitz. He's jammed off the puck there by Ed Kia. Polonich tried to get to it. He did. They hold it in along the boards. And now here we go again with the gathering of players. Willie Huber actually got in that time to give Kia a shove. And the two linesmen, Bob Luther and John D'Amico, in the midst of it all. And there's another fellow who's usually in the middle of it all, Dennis Polonich. Little Dennis, he, uh, he makes sure that he gets there. Good time to hurry to your nearest Super 6 Tire Center where you can save on four-ply poly black wall snow tires. Any size through H2 for $59. I was talking about people being here. Uh, Dr. John Jubilant uh, and his wife are here. from. Uh, they're living in Virginia, but they get in, drive in to see the Wings play. He's a former Detroiter. He wants us to say hello to all his friends back in Detroit. Now here we go again with Dennis Polonich picking it up, playing it over the line. It's taken at his own blue line now by Big Eric Vale, and Vale winds up, digging back into the Detroit zone. He can move, and he's dumped to the ice by John Hamel. Two of them go crashing in along the boards. The centering pass didn't get through. Danny LeBratton out on the left side to San Laurent. They carry in, and LeBratton failed to pick up the loose puck. Sheenard turns with it. He's Sheenard coming back now with a pass too far for Vale. They waved off any icing, so Hamel will play it in behind his own goal, and he starts out. 2 nothing. Atlanta leads. That's John Hamel winding up with a shot. Lemelin knocked it down, and LeBratton was tied up by McMillan as the puck came out in front. They hold it in along the boards and hold it long enough for a whistle. Circle off to the right side of the Atlanta goal. We've played a little less than four minutes now of this, the second period. Atlanta with first period goals. McMillan unassisted, and Lalonde on a power play set up by McMillan. So Bob McMillan, who came into the hockey game, leading the National Hockey League in uh, assists, has added one. And 
also his 24th goal of the year. Greg Carroll now with Big John Hillworth on the right wing and Billy Lahead on the left side. This is the line I think you saw one shift in the first period. Coming down Fox, he cleared it not out. Carroll went digging after it. Again, it's held and they'll have the face off. A little bit closer to the blue line, but still in the Atlanta zone. Greg Carroll, he came in, Sid, and played extremely well his first one or two appearances. And from that time out, he slacked off a little bit. Well, he has not had any experience to speak of. He was with Washington, but not playing too often there. Uh, he's a kid that I would think has to really work and continue to work uh, to stay on this hockey club uh, until he gets some experience. He's been relegated back to line duty now that's not seeing too much action. Billy uh, LaHead doesn't play too often. Big John Hillworth moved up from a defensive position to the left wing, so it's, it's a line that Bobby Crom has put together more or less to give the other lines just a breather every once in a while. Now Carroll won the draw. The puck came out in front, but right thereafter it is Fox. Fox moving out center ice, firing it into the corner in the Detroit zone. Rogi Vashon in behind his goal, played it into the opposite corner. Larson took a bump there from Flett. They jam it in along the boards and hold it, and the face-off stays this time in the Detroit zone. Face-off in the circle to the right side of the Detroit goal. There's Willie Flett. Tough kid. Last game Scored here. a lot of goals last year. Hasn't scored the goals this year. Was it not the last game here that he and John Hillworth tangled? Right. But went off for first aid and missed about a half a period. But it was Flett that... Has won more than he's lost, I'll tell you, when it comes to battling. That's John Gould, number 21. The puck went into the corner. Gould went in after it. He's bumped there by his own man. They still struggle after it. 14 is Gene Carr. Gould hemmed in along the boards this time by Tommy Bergman. The puck loose, and Billy Lahead swings it out on the right wing. Digging in after it now. Reed Larson. Now here come the wings. They've got three men moving up. Over the line, Larson. He drilled a shot, but it was blocked by Fox. He went low, made a good save on it. And then Larson dumped Gene Carr. Play coming back out center ice. After it is flat number 25. The Wings had three men moving down the ice with really only one back. But the man back was Fox, and he blocked the shot of Larson. Now here's the puck going into the Detroit zone. There's going to be a penalty coming up to the Wings, I believe. Looks like an interference call, possibly to Hillworth. I believe it's big John Hillworth. Uh... So while he had been, we shall tell you again that the score is 2 to nothing, Atlanta. We'll be back in just a moment. Labatt's. Used to be a time this was the only way you could get it. Draft. Fresh from the king. For some people, it's still the only way. And since Labatt's already bottles Canada's favorite ale and lager, it just makes sense that we brew Canada's favorite draft. Labatt's Draft. Ask for it by name at your favorite spot. That's John Hillworth away from the play. He was given an elbowing call at 505. Referee Van Helleman was giving an interference signal. But an elbowing call at 505, and Hillworth is off. And now Atlanta with one power play goal, leading the game two to nothing as the extra man. Paul Woods made the play, Tommy Bergman. Bergman lost it, knocked away from him. By Pronovo, here's Pronovo, and the puck slid along the ice, and Vashon cleared it ahead to Dale McCourt, who sends it down the length of the ice. Lemelin out of his goal, hands it off to Gishinar. And again, five forwards up front now, on the power play for Atlanta. The puck came loose, Paul Woods holds it, and Woods is going to slide it back into center ice. Reed Larson almost lost it, and McMillan was right there. McCourt, skating back to his own blue line, dropping it back now for Paul Woods, and Woods. Sends it back to the Atlanta blue line. They have eaten up 45 seconds of the penalty. Bale. Eric Bale now to Lalonde. Bobby Lalonde back into the Detroit zone, pulling up, looking for somebody. Played it back toward the line. Here's Lalonde, McMillan, and now Lalonde again. On the left point, Eric Bale. Bale centering pass. McMillan goes digging after it. He played it back toward the point. Gishinard has it there. Now the chance for Vail. Vail with a shot, and it's deflected over the glass and up into the crowd. Came off a Detroit stick, so they'll hold the face off just inside the Red Wing blue line. 
A minute and 10 seconds has gone by in the penalty, 50 seconds remaining in the Atlanta power play. Now Nick Libet comes out with St. Laurent. Larson and Miller back along the defense. Lalonde will go in against St. Laurent just inside the Detroit blue line. And the puck bounced to the line, but not out. Larson took a kick at it. Here's Guy Chenard with it. It came back to Lalonde. The shot by McMillan was blocked. Chenard digging it off the boards again. Guy Chenard, 29 goals on the season. Put it right out in front. And covering up on the play was Reed Larson. He has thrown a bow covered up. The puck is still there. A chance for McMillan with a shot. He fired it wide. Chenard. Chenard passed to Lalonde. And Vashon knocked away a weak shot. Puck came back to the line. San Laurent couldn't get it out. Now it's Perry Miller with it, and he does lift it, not out again. It's Libet with it now, and the Wings have two men moving down, but the pass came back to Larson. Larson lifting it out center ice. Here's Nick Libet and Sam LaRaw. They're two on two. Libet fired the shot. Lemelin almost mishandled that, made the save, though. There's going to be a penalty coming up to Atlanta as Sam LaRaw was dumped. And again, I think it's an interference call, but Kia is going to go in, and so the teams will be at even strength for one second. We'll be back in just a moment. Parts Plus, the sign of quality parts, competitively priced, plus the kind of service you can count on. Why do you buy from Parts Plus? Well, there when I want them with the parts I need. Quality. With Parts Plus, I know I'm getting the best. We've got a wide selection of hard to find parts. We get the answers that help us do it right. Look for auto stores displaying this sign. Parts Plus, for automotive name brand you trust. Ed Kia, who interfered with San Laurent at 7.04. Now John Hillworth has one second remaining in his penalty. And then the Red Wings will have the extra men. As Hillworth will be moving out. Well, Ed Kia got caught on a play where actually San Laurent was just going to go in in case there was a rebound on a Libet shot. And he interfered with him. Willie Huber tried to get the shot away, but it was blocked. Hillworth's back on now, and he's replaced immediately by Perry Miller. The wings have the odd man. Tommy Bergman swinging in behind his own goal. Now Tommy starts out, bringing it out to center ice. The wings have the extra man for a minute 40. This is Nedimanski. He just shot it into the corner. The Flames' Lemelin cleared it to the opposite corner. John Gould has it there. Trying to work away from Dale McCord. Here's Miller. He'll take it out of the corner. Back on the blue line to Tommy Bergman. He handed it off to McCord. Out in front. He drilled the shot, and he fired it wide. Now Nedimanski let it come back to Huber. Willie Huber holding it off the rim of the circle. Put it out in front, and Perry Miller's shot was knocked away by Lemelin. And Miller was set up beautifully by Huber. Buck kept in at the line by Tommy Bergman, then knocked away, and Dave Shan cleared it. Now here's Gould over the line into the Detroit zone, and he's shot wide. Miller took it off the board, tipped it out, and now it's Nedimanski with it. Big Ned winding up, down on the wrong wing. Moved into the Atlanta zone, flipped it into the corner now. Willie Huber going in after it. Huber put it back to the blue line. Tommy Bergman with an opportunity. He fired the shot, and that was blocked. Blocked by Shand, who went low. Tommy Bergman playing it off the side of the net. Played it back to Huber at the blue line. He held it in at the right point. Now Huber faking the shot, hands it back to Dale McCord. It bounced right by him, and Ribble picks it up and clears it down the ice. And a half a minute left in the penalty to Kia. The Wings have had their chances. They trail it two to nothing. Tommy Bergman sending it off to Huber. Now Huber to Tommy Bergman. Bergman moving it out to center ice with a pass to Miller. Barry Miller's pass to Nedimanski. He's got McCord out in front. Nedimanski, he lost it for the moment, picked it up. Barry Miller's shot blocked out in front. Huber holds it in, goes digging into the corner after it, being chased there by Fox. Dale McCord, he's battling his man, Lalonde, along the boards. Huber gave Fox a bump. That puck's still loose. The Wings don't go in after it, though, and so finally Fox kicked it away. It's still in the Atlanta zone, but here they come, and Atlanta's back at full strength. Over the line, Pronovo. Pronovo tried to get it through. He's got it right out in front, and Kia never got the shot away. Fast on is down, the puck loose. Still loose, and it's knocked into the corner. Tommy Bergman takes a whack at it and sends it the length of the ice. There'll be an icing call. Well, Wings had their chances. Atlanta fought them off. And then the Flames came close. Pesky's Great American Hot Dogs are being featured next week at all Great Scott and Kroger supermarkets. Well, here's a case. Pronovo 
actually had a golden opportunity to score the goal, and, and he passes, and the shot doesn't get. Now, Rogi Vashan has beaten the play. The puck is lying just out there in the open, and they can't get their stick to it. The Wings did everything but help them score a goal, but they didn't take advantage of it. So the teams are at full strength to play in the Detroit end. John Amell cleared it along the board. Danny Lebrat in the center ice, but Ribble stops it there. And Ribble shooting it back in. San Laurent brought it out. He's turned around by McMillan. Now Guy Chouinard. Now McMillan. McMillan went out in front. He was stopped by Reed Larson. Polonich. He shot it off the referee. It came out center ice. San Laurent has really felt it down by Ribble. Now Fox lost it to LeBratton. Danny LeBratton turning in behind the goal. He put it right through the goal mouth. And nobody there. Fox clears it to the corner, and Eric Vale has it. Now Vale played it to the opposite corner. Fox along the boards to McMillan. Out at center ice. Chenard goes digging over the line. And Reed Larson got there first. Now Larson starts out. They head to LeBratton. Danny LeBratton on the move over the line into the Atlanta zone. He went around Fox and he's turned around by Fox. They go in behind the net. Reed Larson gave his man a bump. The puck is loose. Kept in by Polonix and he brought it right to the line. If not out, it was close. Here now a chance for Sam LaRaw. And he was stopped out in front. Picked it up again. Slid it to the goal mouth. The wing took another whack at it. LeBratton has it. Danny LeBratton sliding it out in front. But the Flames will take it. And there is a penalty coming up. A Red Wing player is down. It's Polonix right out in front of the goal. And a penalty has been called, and Dennis Polonich was shaken up. And Fox is going to go in, and we'll be back right after this. We're Fred Drendel, Lincoln Mercury. Before anything else, that means we're people who care. The most important thing to us is our customers not just the, the product we sell them originally, but the service after the sale. We want them to help us uh, and refer business to us, and uh, without this referral, we're nothing. Our customer means everything. On Oakland near Telegraph in Pontiac. Well, the Wings had several chances here to put the puck in the net, but I don't really believe they had a shot on the net. It was just, it, it's out there in front. Fox comes up and high sticks Dennis Blige and winds up getting a penalty. Possibly could have been five minutes. I don't know if Dennis was cut or not. It appeared as though he, he was shaken up. Uh, That's what I was looking for because Lefty Wilson is still working on Dennis over along the Detroit bench, and he seems to have been cut, which would have necessitated a five-minute penalty. You can see him just above his uh, the eye there. left eye, I guess, uh, a little neck. Uh. Bobby Crom has called Bolduck over to say something to him, but not in reference, I guess, to anything other than where he wants him. Now the wings have the extra man. The puck is driven out to center ice. Willie Huber has it there, giving it to Reed Larson. Larson handing it off to Libet. Nick Libet shot it into the Atlanta zone, going in after it is Gould. Gould played it along the board. Libet knocked it down there. Paul Woods gets into it. So does Lalonde. And they hold it for a face-off in the circle to the right of the Atlanta goal. The wings have the extra man for a minute 39. And the Wings need a goal right now to get back in this hockey game. Uh, they're, they're still playing very, very defensive-minded, uh, something that they haven't been doing as of late. The Wings are just falling behind in the early stages of just about every game they play. Into the afternoon, three to nothing, and they came back and made a heck of a game out of it until Buffalo took over again in the third period. Here's Reed Larson with a shot at deflected right in. And oh, the what Wings I have scored. That's what they needed. I think possibly Paul Woods uh, got a hold of it uh, just off to the right side of the net. Lemelin never, never made a move, and uh, Reed Larson really got the wood to it. Play goes back from Nick Libet to Larson. Larson fires it, and see if Paul Woods. He may not have. Paul Woods is right there with him. Larson gets the goal. Woods and Libet draw the assist on the power play goal scored by Larson. So it may have bounced in off an Atlanta player. Stan LaRoz pass skips over the top of Nick Libet. The bulldog it is over on the right wing. With Woods still at center ice. Puck kept in by Willie Huber. He hands it off to Woods with a shot. And Paul Woods set up perfectly. Drove it wide. Now three on one. Here's Atlanta moving in. Philippoff took the shot, and Vashon came up with a big save there. But what a chance Paul Woods had to tie the hockey game just moments earlier. 
All Paul Woods had to do, Bruce, was hit the net. So Lemelin never made a move at all. But it's a funny thing, then the wings make a big error, a lot of three-on-one coming back. And I don't know what would make Filipov shoot from where he shot the puck. Uh, he just fired it straight into Rogi Bashan's midsection from probably about 30 feet to the top of the circle. And yet he had a player wide open out in front that he could have passed to. Reed Larson with his 12th goal of the year on the power play from Woods and Libet at 11-12. Now that was just about a half a minute. Matter of fact, 27 seconds after Polonich had gone in. If uh, the referee had assessed a five minute, and I'm not sorry, not Polonich, the Fox, with Polonich cut on the play, if Fox had been given the five minutes, the Wings would have the extra man for still another four minutes. But the teams are at even strength. That man, or rather, Hillworth got over the line. That's Lawrence clearing it in behind his own goal. The score now two to one. About eight minutes left in the second period. This is Shand. Dave Shand into the Detroit zone. Wound up for a shot. Last shot knocks it away. Huber sent it into the corner to Hillworth. John Hillworth to Greg Carroll. He had trouble with it. It's back on the line. That's Brad Marsh with a shot, and Vashon stopped that. Hillworth played it and went off of Carroll. Here's Putt with it again, and finally tipped out center ice by Glockner. Shen. Now it's Marsh shooting it in behind the Detroit goal. Skipped away from Vashon, and Putt held it in, but Billy Lahead will take over. The wings move out three on two. On the move is Carroll. Carroll tried to work the pass through, didn't do it. John Hillworth kept it in for the moment, but the Flames will pick it up. Greg Fox bringing it back out center eight. Now along the boards on the right side, trying to work away from Glockner. Fox in behind the Detroit goal. Fox still in control. Dumped it into the corner to Plett. Now Willie Plett's pass stopped by Hillworth. Big John sent it into the other corner for Glockner. Willie Huber and Hillworth. Hillworth tipped it out center eight. Seven minutes to go in the second period. Two to one Atlanta. Moving now is Fox. He shot it off the boards in behind the Detroit goal, and Laurie Glockner goes in after it. Now Glockner, a short pass at Hillworth, tipped to the line, but not out. John Hillworth kneeling on the puck along with Pronovo there. They stop the play, and the faceoff will stay in the Detroit end. Well, look into the big business of rock and roll with blues performer John Mayall as a special guest on the Joe Terry Show tonight, 10 o'clock, on TV 50. Red Wings trail by a goal. A lot of time left. Six minutes, 46 in the second period. John Hamel sent it deep into the corner in his own zone. Reed Larson in after it. His pass off the skate of Dale McCourt. Dropped back for Nedimensky. Now Big Net on the move from the blue line with a shot. Lemelin cleared that to the corner. They go in after it. The puck came loose and coming out with it, Gene Carr. Carr skating his way out center race. He lost his balance, lost the puck. Barry Miller. Now to Nedimansky, good pass to McCourt. McCourt with a shot, Lemelin stops that. And Fox takes it. Now Pronovo. John Pronovo's pass. That hit Carr. Carr sent it right back to Pronovo. Off to the side of his net, Vashon steers it over in the right wing for Nedimansky. It got tangled up in his skates there. Reed Larson goes in. And that puck is still loose. And coming out with it is McCourt. Dale McCourt turning away from Carr's check. Now McCourt at center ice. Got Larson, but the puck went off of Nedimansky, and Ned comes back after it. Over on the left side, Miller overskated. It came back after it. Now at center ice, it's Larson again, and Larson finally lifts it in the air, bounced it to the side of the net, and the wings go for a player change. Third over on the right wing, now to Murdoch. Bob Murdoch bringing it out to center ice. San Laurent slowed him up there, and Hamel hands it off to Miller. Now Dennis Polonich went around Pronovo into the Atlanta zone. He ducked, went into the corner, but Ribble got a piece of him, and down he went. Murdoch's pass broken up by Polonich, who is streaking all over the ice, and now it's Atlanta starting back. E. Chouinard. He moves into the Detroit zone with a shot, and Vashon made a late move, kicked it away. Willie Huber. He dumped it ahead on the right wing to Dennis Polonich. Polonich lifts it in the air to center ice. The Bratton drops it off there for San Laurent. Andre San Laurent over the line. Digging into the corner, being chased by Murdoch. Played it right out in front. He scores, and the Red Wings have tied the game at 2-2 two to two on a pretty play by San Laurent. Beautiful play. Takes a little pass from LeBratton out in center right. Just watch the way he pulled around the defenseman. Pulled back out in front of the net and put it right along the ice on the short side. He dips, he dupes both Atlanta defensemen just terrifically. This is one thing that St. Laurent can do 
I can criticize the fact that he doesn't shoot off enough or pass. He gets in. He always wants to get in real, just a little closer, but he made a beautiful play. So the Wings with two goals, less than four minutes apart, have come from behind again to tie the hockey game at 2-2. The power play goal by Reed Larson, and now San Laurent's ninth of the year from LeBroton and Polonich at 15.06. Play back into the Detroit zone. Larson went back after it. I think he was looking for an icing call that didn't come. The wings live it. Starts Paul Woods out. Woods with a sliding, rolling puck. It was kept in, and Tommy Bergman knocked it back to the Atlanta blue line. Ed Kia on the right side to McMillan. Bobby McMillan pulling up. He handed it off to Kia. Kia drove the shot, and Bashan got to that one. Now Paul Woods played it into the opposite corner. Tommy Bergman going in after it. McMillan got there, handed it back to Kia. Another shot. And Vashon stops that. Tommy Bergman cleared it out on the right side for Bolduck. Bolduck sets it to the line, but again, not out. The Wings having problems moving it out of their own zone. They slide it now to center ice, and Kia has it. He dumps it right back in. Tommy Bergman will go in after him. Along the left wing for Libet. Libet ahead now to Paul Woods. Woods sends it back to Libet out at center ice. He's got Bolduck on the right side. The two of them move in. Here's Libet with a shot blocked by Vale. Libet sent it right out in front, and it bounced off Kia. He controls it. Moving back out now, Chouinard. 3.45 to go in the second period. It's a 2-2 tie. McMillan was checked. The puck bounced back out center ice, and the Flames have to come back on side. Ed Kia, he's checked by Woods, who drove it back into the Atlanta zone. Three and a half minutes to go. In behind his own goal, Kia back along the Atlanta defense, clearing it on the right side to Murdoch. Bob Murdoch's pass tipped away in the center ice zone. It goes over the line. Lawrence in after it for Atlanta. Red Lawrence turned around by John Hillworth. The puck is loose, though. Flett played it in behind his own goal. Willie Huber didn't get after it. It's tapped back to him now by Billy Lahat. Huber bumped in behind the goal, knocked down by Flett. But now here moving out is Hillworth. He's got Lahat on the left side. Hillworth had trouble with it. Drops it back for Carroll. Carroll took it over the line, played it back to Lahat. Billy Lahat was jammed off the puck by Philipoff, and coming right back now is Lawrence. Lawrence trying to work around Glockner. Glockner took him off the puck, and Huber swings it out on the right wing to Hillworth. Ahead now to Carroll. Carroll playing it into the Atlanta zone. Ahead went in ahead of the pass. It's offside, and we'll be back in just a moment. Amoco was the first major brand with a premium lead-free gasoline that proved it helped stop performance problems. Amoco premium lead-free, proven by experience to help stop run-on, to burn smoother, and help stop knock. And even improved mileage because you don't have to change the timing to prevent knock. That's the kind of performance you get with Amoco premium lead-free. Sedeva with you from here at Atlanta's Omni where the Red Wings and the Flames are tied at 2-2. In our second intermission, Nick Libet is going to be our guest. He and Al Coates got together for a conversation that I think you'll be enjoying. Now this is Reed Larson playing it back out center ice. Coming back after it is Ribble. That Ribble clearing it back into the Detroit zone. It bounced right to Vashon. He hands it off to Larson again. Larson is immediately... Taken into the corner by Lalonde. The puck came loose. Still loose in the Detroit zone. A scramble, and Dale McCourt has it. McCourt bounced off the puck by Lalonde. They take it to the corner, hold it there, and we'll have a face-off to the right side of the Detroit goal. An hour of late-night comedies coming your way with Make Me Laugh and The Gong Show. Tomorrow night, starting at 11 o'clock on TV 50. Bruce, I mentioned Dr. and Mrs. Jabolian being here to say hello. We also have John and Laura Boucher who want to say best wishes to their friends and family, and especially to Jimmy, Ben, and Jeffrey, no doubt of their children back in Detroit. Now that's John Hamel. In behind his own goal, Hamel fired it off the boards, but not far enough. Fox held it in. In behind the net, Lalonde went digging in after it. Hamel got there. He collides along the boards with Cronobo. And again, they hold it, and a face-off stays, this time in the circle to the right of Vashon. A minute and 55 seconds to go here in the second period with the game tied at 2-2. McMillan at 10 away to the first period, and then Lalonde and a setup from McMillan on a power play at 15-01. The Wings have come back with a power play goal by Larson, and San Laurent scored. 2-2. Two two. John Hamel. Now Hamel turning away from Lalonde's check. 
Buck goes into the corner. Pronovo and digging in after it. But McCourt came out with it. Here now is Nedimansky. Nedimansky over the line. Whistle that shot and it deflected wide off the stick of Fox. Ribble played it ahead now to Pronovo. Here's Lalonde coming out. Nedimansky took a heavy check from Fox down in the opposite corner. Lost his helmet. And we're going to be back after we pause for this. See your local TV book for a free pizza coupon. A minute and a half to play in the second period. Nedimanski picks the helmet up, puts it back on, and the play resumes. We go in behind the Detroit goal with Reed Larson. Now Larson's pass coming out to Dale McCourt. Knocked away from him. Larson has it once more. Here's Nedimanski turning. Nedimanski ahead to Perry Miller. Miller dropped it off for Tommy Bergman, and he played it wide of Nedimanski. Eric Bale starts back in. McMillan cutting out in front, but it was Larson that made the check on the play. Now it's Dale McCord again. Good pass now to Perry Miller. Miller trying to work out in front, and his shot deflected by Murdoch ended up in the crowd. We have exactly one minute to play in the second period. They'll bring the face off in the circle off to the left of the Atlanta goal. Bruce, I'd like to just make mention of the fact that this is the type of hockey game I think the Wings have to play if they're going to be in contention at all. They're going up and down their wings. If you've noticed, I don't think their defense have been caught out of position all night long. I mean, they're not getting caught where there's two on-one two on breaks and three-on-one breaks. Everything they do, the forwards go up, the defensemen are just following the play. They're not carrying the puck, passing it in, and following things up. Play came back to Willie Huber with a shot. Lemelin grabs that in the midsection and holds it for a quick face-off, which stays still deep in the Atlanta zone. They used up all of four seconds. 56 remain. And while we have these few seconds, I'll get rid of all these people that said to say hello. Bob, Rachel, Weisman, Oak Park, they split the section two. They wanted to say hello to all their friends back in Detroit. And I had a real nice letter from Wesley Zeefelt talking about Curve Stitch, 70 some years old, and he's a real avid Red Wing follower. And he was talking about he can't understand how these kids, why they don't use a, a, a stick a lot like a golf club where there's no curve. He, says he feels that this is why they can't hit the net. Uh, but it shows that his interest is really with the Red Wings. I always thought if you'd have had a curve stick when you were playing, you'd probably been right up there. I'd that. probably still be playing. Oh, yeah. The face-off will be to the left of the Atlanta goal. Huber let a shot go. Knocked down out in front. Flames seed it back to the center ice zone with McMillan picking it up. Down the boards on the right wing. Went to the line. Tried to work out in front, but Glockner tipped it away from him. The puck is bouncing back along the line. Kia knocked it down there. Kept it in. He scores! Buck just took a funny bounce. Right on front of that one. I can't believe it. Someday, it's going to turn around and go the other way. I think LeBrat tries to throw the puck out. He flips it up high. Kia makes a terrific play. Kia goes as high as he can, knocks it down. Now watch this shot. He just turns around. It's a little backhand shot. Oh, it changed direction. Rosie Vachon never saw it at all. It was a little backhand shot that hit a player out. 10 or 12 feet out in front of the net. It's got to be go ahead, eye. Unassisted goal. I don't know. You just start to wonder. Here now, Danny LeBratton. LeBratton cleared it into the Atlanta zone. It's fired right back up. Willie Huber played it back in. Kia goes in after it. It wasn't even much of a shot. It's just a little backhand flip that ended up in the net as it took a crazy bounce. There's a shot, LeBratton's shot. He fired another one, and he shot it wide. Glockner has a chance from the left point. He let the shot go. Lemelin knocked it away. LeBratton went in along the boards. They battle there for it. LeBratton got it loose. Then LaRaw sent it back to him. LeBratton tied up now by McMillan. Still he worked it to Polonic as the buzzer goes to end the second period where the Red Wings took the play away, scored two goals, and then a bouncing puck by Vachon that makes it now 3-2 to two at Atlanta, leading the Detroit Red Wings. And we'll be back with our special guest in a moment. Thank you. 
There's a brand new car from American Motors, the Spirit DL, and it'll change the way you move. Let the Spirit move you. Let the Spirit move you. Sporty looks, corduroy bucket seats, and a sleek instrument panel. Let the Spirit move you. Let the Spirit move you. Get into a great-looking, smooth-riding car. Get into the AMC Spirit. American Motors has the Spirit. Let the Spirit move you. Ah, the endless possibilities of Peshki Meats and your imagination. Imagine a great new way to enjoy Peshki Lunch Meats or Bologna. Put a slice or two on two triangles of refrigerated crescent roll dough. Add a slice of American cheese, wrap it all up, and bake till brown. Your imagination makes it possible. Peshki makes it perfect. Peshki makes it perfect, because Peshki really Sid, it gets to the point where you just can't believe it. Wings took the play, but look at this. Well, LeBratton tries to get it out into the center ice zone, and Kia makes a terrific play, keeps it inside, and watch this little backhand shot. Hits Glockner's stick, deflects, goes in between Huber's legs. Rogi Vachon doesn't see the puck at all. You can see he moves just as it's going through the crease. Innocent little play like that, but the wings are behind. And it's sort of been the story of a season for the Detroit Red Wings, but there's still 20 minutes of hockey to be played, and if they continue the type of play we saw in the second period, we're in for some fun yet. Our guest tonight is Nick Livett. He's only one of four National Hockey League active players who spent over 12 years in their entire career with one club. The others, Stan Makita, Ron Ellis, and Jacques Lemaire. So now let's join Al Coates with a veteran, Nick Livett. Nick, 12 years in the league uh, it puts you in a category with a lot of guys like Lemaire and Esposito and uh, Sittler, or not Sittler, but say Ellis. All of it's been in, uh, in Detroit for you. Uh, is this good or is it bad for Nick Lewis? Well, hockey-wise, uh, you know, things haven't gone as well as I think I would have liked as far as playoffs and everything, but as far as, you know, personally, everybody has to be somewhere during a 10 or 12-year period, and, and Detroit has been a, a great town for me. I just, uh, I really like it here. I have good friends outside of hockey and in hockey, but it's it's been uh, more than adequate living here. Well, you're, you, of course, you're in business here besides playing hockey, and we're going to talk about that in a little bit. But first of all, you come out of a, a, a system known as sponsorship rather than being drafted, and maybe you can just pull the fans in a little bit on what, what that actually entails. Well, when I first... Uh, started playing hockey obviously it was Pee Wee and Bam and then when I was 15 years old I went away to Hamilton uh, to play for the Hamilton Red Wings which uh, then were, they were sponsored by the Detroit Red Wings um, the Detroit team came in and locked up our our minor hockey system and consequently they they locked up everybody you know that had any potential to, uh, for playing hockey and as it turned out uh, I've been a Red Wing ever since I was 13 14 years old Okay, now obviously it has some uh, advantages for you and it has some disadvantages and uh, one of the advantages is that you've been able to, uh, to make a lot of friends in Detroit and, and to get into business. Uh, why not give the business a little plug? Well, I, uh, I was fortunate enough to meet some, again, nice people. You know, it's always uh, uh, nice people are where you find them and, and I happen to meet some, some nice people with uh, Wyandotte Paint Products. We uh, are an automotive industrial uh, paint sales company and uh, uh, I've been working at it now for three years, um, obviously more in the summer than I do in the winter, but it's, it's hopefully what I'm going to do when I'm through playing hockey and, and I've, I've tried to get a base for when that retirement day does come. Well, the good part about that, of course, from the club standpoint, is that you are also available to uh, Bud Lynch and Kathy Best and myself uh, come the summertime to make some personal appearances and uh, try and improve the uh, image or keep the image of the club at, uh, at, a, at a high peak. And uh, we appreciate that. And uh, maybe this summer we'll be doing some more of that. But now, uh, talking about hockey now, a, a plus player on this club, and there are too many of them, and you're one of them, uh, is, is a big plus for the hockey club. Uh, and, and maybe you can explain what, exactly what that is, a plus minus. Well, Al, it's like the old story, you know, plus minus is when you're on the ice uh, for or against a goal when the team's at full strength. Uh, again, it doesn't mean, you know, it, it means something, but it's not a, a whole big uh, deal because sometimes you're on a goal when you're completely out of the play uh, or some, our team scores a goal when you're completely out of the play. It, it's it's a, a small thing, uh, you know, among a whole team situation. It's uh, uh, between whole team situations. It's... it's um, uh, a statistic that is is not really that important. I don't think it's, you know, the bottom line is winning, and, and we're having exactly. our troubles this yeah. year. And, and uh, people say, "Well, I'm, I'm a plus, so what?" It's it's nice, but it's it would be nicer if the team was doing a lot yeah, better. Definitely. 
Now, when we talk about, I mentioned uh, Jock Lemaire and uh, Esposito, but Lemaire is a guy, you know, you talk about uh, a Jock Lemaire, he's a big scorer, and uh, maybe you you associated Lemaire with the Montreal Canadiens or a Montreal Canadiens with the Lemaire because of his scoring. Now, to me, uh, I I feel when you talk about the Detroit Red Wings, you talk about a Nick Libet, 12 years in the league, and uh, I'm sure for, for you, uh, it, this has a certain, uh, not advantages, but there's a characteristic involved there, and it's, it's, it's got to be attributed to your general kind of player. What kind of a player is Nick Libet? Well, Al, I've always, I've never been a great goal scorer. Uh, I'd say uh, 20 to 25 goals, and, and I've always been try a disciplined type player, uh, up and down my wing and, and, and try to, to check my winger. And, and I feel personally that if, that if everybody concentrated on, on doing that particular job, knowing that when you're out against a, a particular player, not, not let him score, then consequently I think the team uh, teams would do a lot better. But I'm strictly a, what you call an old school up and down player. Big question now, of course, is uh, uh, although the, there are problems, uh, the team is definitely still in, in a race for the, or in the running for a playoffs. Can the Red Wings make the playoffs? Well, I think things are, I, we're not by no means out of it. Uh, you know, the, the attitude is definitely down, but but a lot of things would have to happen. I'm sure Pittsburgh and L.A. are not going to completely fold and, 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 and lose the remaining uh, 30 games or so they have. We would have to win 15 to 20 games, and they'll have to lose 15 to 20 games. It'll be a tough road to hold, but until that last uh, that mathematical chance is exhausted, then we're just going to keep plugging, and you never know what happens. Well, I think if everybody does their job like you do, Nick, I think the, the opportunity is certainly there, and we wish you a lot of luck. And Let's go back to Bruce Martin. Al Coates and Nick Libet, our guest receives a Sony AM-FM table radio. It has extremely high power output, bass, treble, volume control, direct speaker coupling, and drip-free FM reception. It's an ICF 9580W, and it's a Sony. So we have played two periods of hockey with a score of the Atlanta Flames 3, the Detroit Red Wings 2, and we'll be back with more in just a moment. <laughs> Here, what the keys? I'd rather than this. Furnace? No matter what else you got, don't get caught with your burners down. When thirst threatens to get the best of you, nothing can replace Furner's mysteriously refreshing taste. Don't get caught with your burners down, old boy. <laughs> What do you get with your interest from most banks when you deposit money? Next. What do you get with your interest when you deposit money in Bank of the Commonwealth? I got a piano. I got a piano. I got these tools. I got a watch. At Bank of the Commonwealth, when you deposit as little as $1,000 in a seven-year, 7% 7 time certificate, you'll not only earn big interest, but also a big bonus, some bigger than others. Trying hardest to help. That's the Bank of the Commonwealth. Now on the ice, the Detroit Standard Dealers Sports Club, giving their support to Greater Detroit and our own Detroit professional teams. They may not be pros on skate, but they sure are at offering you quality standard service for your car. What do you say, guys? Come on out and support the Standard Dealers and our teams. Sid, the Red Wings kept things going at a pace there in the second period where, as we mentioned, we are going to talk a little bit about some of the injured players of the Wings and didn't get the chance, so it might be a good opportunity right now. And you have to start with a fellow who's been walking around with a peculiar sort of a smile the last couple of weeks, Errol Thompson <laughs> with a wired jaw. But Errol uh, is skating and is due back, uh, I'm going to say, the middle of this week. Right, they're hoping that he can play Thursday. Uh, at Minnesota. At Minnesota. You know, the fact that he's had his jaws wired together, or his jaw wired together, I understand Errol's taken off 15 pounds, so uh, he's going to come back a, a much lighter hockey player, and he's one player that the wings have missed, Bruce, because he gives them a little seniority up and down the wing and the fact that he can score goals. Well, the other fellow that we can talk about now, and we'll welcome Errol back in the game we hope Thursday night at Minnesota, which incidentally is going to be on radio, WJR. The, uh, I speak about a young defenseman who really found himself, I think, for the first time in the National Hockey League last year, and I'm talking about Greg Jolly and I know the wings are really looking for big things from him this year and it just didn't happen because in the uh, Stanley Cup play last year uh, Greg was hurt the wrist and they had to graft uh, out of the hip uh, prior to the start of this season 
So he has uh, been skating over the last uh, oh, couple of weeks, and Greg uh, may be back. I'm going to say three weeks, they're hoping. You know, I can go way back in Greg Jolly's career because I watched him as a junior out in Western Canada, and I saw him in the Memorial Cup playoffs. I was with Kansas City at the time. We drafted Wolf Paymont. Milt Schmidt was the manager of Washington at the time, and he jumped, grabbed, he had the first choice, and he grabbed, gra uh, uh -huh. took Greg Jolly. Then Greg had a terrific amateur career. He went to Washington, and I think they built their hopes that he was going to carry the entire Washington club. First thing you know, they moved him from defense back up to a forward. They started jockeying him around, and they got him so confused that they turned around, and Washington made the trade. When he came to Detroit, he found himself last year, Bruce. He's a good hockey player. He can carry the puck. He can shoot the puck. And he's probably the best puck carrier amongst all the Detroit defensemen. And they have missed him tremendously all year long. And he's due back, we hope, in about uh, three weeks. Well, the Red Wings, we've talked about Willie Huber, had uh, two draft choices in the first round this year. Willie Huber was the number one, and just down a little list, they went and they picked a second draft choice in the number one round of Brent Peterson. And here again, the Wings had high hopes for Brent. He's a big kid, plays up on the wing. And uh, I'm going to say a half a dozen games into the season in a freak sort of an accident, Brent made a little turn in the corner, wasn't hit, didn't hit the boards, but broke his leg very badly. You know, it's going to be hard to say. We didn't see enough of Brent Peterson to say just how good a hockey player he is. It's one of those freak things that happened. There was nobody near him. He fell, broke his leg. The big thing is, can the kid come back now from a broken leg and play hockey the way the Wings hope he will play? Sometimes a broken leg will just put him off enough that his National League career might be shortened because of it. But there are other times where people oh, yeah. play over injuries like that and uh, come back and are there's right a, there. There's a kid 51 years old, or will be 51, still playing in the <laughs> league that's had his knees operated on about four times, Gordy Who or Cow yeah. or whatever you call him. And a concussion very early in his right. career that was supposed to stop him right there and just slowed him down for a short time. Uh, Sid uh, Brent Peterson, uh, I don't know if he'll be back this year. I rather doubt it. He's going to have that cast still on his leg for, they say, about another three weeks. And then... Uh, yeah, I imagine to start skating, but I doubt we'll see a great deal of him. But these are three young men that the Red Wings are going to welcome back into the fold just as quickly as they possibly can. Well, you can't afford to lose keys, and, and Greg Jolly was definitely a yeah. keys, and lost for the entire season. Uh, he was hurt last year in the playoffs. I'm sure that Ted Lindsay and Bobby Crom had plans that he would play regularly on the hockey club. Comes back to camp, training camp, and they find out his wrist hadn't healed properly. They had to re-break it, wire it again, and take this uh, bone graft or something out of his hip. He has been a tremendous loss all year long. Well, Greg will overcome that. He's skating well, and he's kind of anxious to get back in it. We've talked to Brent Peterson a couple of times, and Brent, uh, is <laughs> he was kind of lamenting the fact that he's played hockey all through his youth, and uh, he finally makes the National Hockey League. He has never had a broken bone or a serious injury before in his life, and he plays a half a dozen games in the National Hockey League, and zappo, there it goes. Well, that, those things happen. Oh, yeah. I went out and forgot to take my guards off and broke my <laughs> hip after playing the National League, and never, other than breaking my nose, hadn't yeah. broke a bone. Well, the Detroit Red Wings came from behind. They tied the Atlanta Flames here with some fine play at 2-2, two to two, and just a few seconds before the period was over, a kind of a fluke goal by Ed Kia that put Atlanta out in front 3-2. to two. But 20 minutes of hockey still to be played, and we'll be back with the third period face-off in just a moment. When you own a trans van, you have to get used to all the room inside, like the carpeted dining area with thick cushioned seats and removable tables. <laughs> The sleeping area has large, comfortable sofa beds covered with stylish fabrics, ample closet space, too, and the stand-up kitchen has an ice box, stainless steel sink, roomy drawers, and plenty of cupboards. The versatile trans van from Champion. Say, maybe your next car shouldn't be a car. See the new trans van at Sterling Heights Motors and South Point Dodge. save hundreds of dollars if you could buy diamonds direct from the cutters. Well, now you can. Buy direct from the New York Diamond Cutting Company, the Diamond Cutters, and save up to 60% on your diamond. 
Now a 1.98 carat oval shaped diamond for only $17.75. Save at the New York Diamond Cutting Company. Call, Call our Southfield sales office now for your appointment. One hour of your time could save you hundreds of dollars. Parts Plus, the sign of quality parts, competitively priced, plus the kind of service you can count on. When it comes to protecting your car's engine against rust, corrosion, winter cold, and summer heat, nothing tops Peak. Nothing. And now you can afford the best. Get two gallons of Peak antifreeze and coolant for just $5.99 at your nearest participating Parts Plus Auto Store. Look for auto stores displaying this sign. Parts Plus for automotive name brands you trust. A one-goal difference in the hockey game. Atlanta leads it 3-2. to two. The shots and goal, they've been all even. Each team had eight shots in the first period. Each team had 11 shots in the second. And so after two periods of play, the shots and goal, 19 for Atlanta, 19 for the Detroit Red Wings. And Sid, uh, you'd have to say it has been, I believe, an evenly played hockey game. Oh, definitely. Up and down. Uh, the Wings have played their positions probably better tonight than they have in any game this season. They've played just the way hockey's supposed to be played two, you can actually say three mistakes have cost them three goals. First, Dale McCourt didn't pick up his player in center ice and let McMillan go. He went in and scored a goal. Tommy Bergman made a glaring error for an experienced defenseman to try to flip the puck out of his own zone, put it right to McMillan. McMillan passed to Lalan. Lalan scored. Then, surprisingly, LeBratton, it appeared as though he made a good play. He flipped it up, got it just about high enough to clear yeah, it. like Kia. a basketball player in that one. Well, Kia is about six foot four or six five, and Kia went to the stretch position and knocked it down, took a little backhand shot, hit Glockner's stick, went between Willie Huber's legs into the corner of the net. You could read the label on the puck. It wasn't move, moving that fast, but Rogi Bashan didn't see it until it was going through the crease, and he made a move just a second too late, and Atlanta has the lead. Well, we have a moment with the teams coming back out onto the ice, and you watch the Wings uh, filing out of their dressing room down the corridor. This is the Wings' last uh, visit here to Atlanta this season, and so we've had a note from Joe Watkins, who is uh, from the Atlanta Flames fan club, who would like to say hello to the Detroit Forums, which is, of course, a very hardworking and uh, good group of people in Detroit who attend the Red Wing games at home and on the road and really are great boosters of the Wings who would have been some bad seasons. And last year, I think they were probably as happy as anybody in the state of Michigan. The Flames are going to be uh, hosting this year's convention of uh, fan clubs. A uh, little part of the month of August, there'll be more about it. Yeah, there's one of the fans right I there. Say. So they're going to be hosting it right here in Atlanta. And they'll be sending along details, but it could be quite a thing. I guess you have to belong to a National Hockey League booster club to attend the convention. But it sounds like there's going to be some fun here in Atlanta. That's right. And this possibly will get people to join the booster club back in Detroit because uh, they will come down here and sometime in July and really have a, a ball for a few days. God darn it, I just said August. Oh, and is it August? <laughs> no, it's probably in July, I don't know. You have the release, Bruce. I don't. But well, it's three to two. The Detroit Red Wings trail the Atlanta Flames, and we're about to get the third period underway. Both teams are at full strength. We've had a total of 11 penalties in the hockey game. Six to Atlanta, five to Detroit. Each team has one power play goal. Detroit has Dale McCord out with Nedimanski on the right side and Barry Miller on the left wing. Glockner and Huber back along the defense and Rogie Vachon in the Detroit goal. This is Harold Filipoff moving into the Detroit zone. Filipoff and a Red Wing player and a... Atlanta player are tangled right out in front of us now down along the blue line and a pane of glass has been knocked out so they stopped the play. Red Lawrence and Nedimanski went bumping in along the boards and that big pane of glass did not shatter it just popped loose so the two linesmen with a little help from a couple of the fans stick it back in and we shall get things going again. They'll bring the face off right along the Detroit blue line. Is at center on the line of Filipoff on the left wing and flat on the right side for Atlanta with Ribble and Fox back along the Atlanta defense. Jean Lemelin in the net for the Flames. Buck has bounced off the boards and the play went into the Detroit end offside. Super Six Tire Centers brings you moments to remember. We ask the question, who are the two former Red Wings who scored over a thousand points in their National Hockey League careers? And we have the answer. 
Gordie Howe counted 1,809 over 25 seasons, and Alex Delvecchio, who recorded 1,281 in the 23 years that he played in the National Hockey League in a Red Wing uniform. Now here is Ribble. That Ribble's pass is knocked away, picked up by Ned Amansky over on the left side, moving in Perry Miller. He drilled a shot, and Lemelin made the save. In behind his own goal is Platt. Now Platt starts out. Moving out center ice. Filipoff on the left side. The play went in offside with Filipoff. Just a step ahead. And they'll bring it back out over the Detroit blue line. 10,100 and some odd fans here at the Omni. They have not drawn exceptionally well here in Atlanta this season. It's quite some fine play by the Flames. Now here's Perry Miller. He lost it for the moment, digging in after it's flat, but he had the stick pulled out from under him, and the play goes in behind the Detroit goal. Ned Amansky tipped it out to center ice, back after it is Lawrence. Red Lawrence, swinging it out on the right side to Flett. He rolls it back to the Detroit goal. Willie Huber heads in after it. Now Huber's pass, knocked away by Filipov, came back to Ribble, knocked down out in front. Flett caught it, and he scores. Flett actually caught that puck, knocked it down, and fired it in, and that's three goals that have been handled that way by Atlanta. This is a questionable goal because he closed his hand on this puck before he set it down. I thought the referee, now with this watch, he catches the puck, closes his hand, skates over. Now he drops it and shoots and scores. And the referee is looking directly at the play. I'm surprised that he didn't call that play down, but uh, it's a goal, and uh, they're arguing the point now with him. Again, though, the Wings had the puck. Ribble draws the only assist on the goal. The Wings did go out and question the referee, Van Helleman, but it was rather apparent on the replay that he actually skated it. That's right. He carried the puck in his it. hand and then dropped it and, and scored. Uh, so Willie Platt gets the fourth goal, and Atlanta leads it by a score of 4-2. to two. Now Hamel's pass knocked away. Here's Tonovo. Catches the puck, closes his hand, skates over. Now he drops it and shoots and scores. And the referee is looking directly at the play. I'm surprised that he didn't call that play down, but uh, it's a goal, and uh, they're arguing the point now with him. Again, though, the Wings had the puck. Ribble draws the only assist on the goal. The Wings did go out and question the referee, Van Helleman, but it was rather apparent on the replay that he actually skated it. That's right. He carried the puck in his it. hand and then dropped it and, and scored. Uh, so Willie Platt gets the fourth goal, and Atlanta leads it by a score of 4-2. to two. Now Hamel's pass knocked away. Here's Tronovo going back in. Dropped it off for Lalonde, making the check with Hamel. Play goes into the corner. Libet swept it, but not out. There's a shot. Fast shot. Knocks that down. Bulldog has it. Now turning in his own zone, Paul Woods. Tommy Bergman. He shot it off the boards to Bulldog. Then Bulldog dropped it back, and Hamel knocked it away. But here's Lalonde with it. Hamel stopped his pass. Coming back now, Bulldog. Over the line. He's got one man back. That's Marsh. Bulldog split it right to the goal crease, and Lemelin knocked it away. Bullduck was sent falling by Marsh. The play is in the Atlanta zone. Tronovo wrapped it out towards center ice. Going back after it, Tommy Bergman. He moves in behind Vashon. It's 4-2. to two. Atlanta leads. Flett got the goal from Ribble for Willie Flett's 17th goal of the season. The pass came out to center ice. Marsh stopped it there. Or rather, Murdoch, and he shot it back into the Detroit end. Played along the boards to Danny Bullduck. Bullduck. We'll swing it in behind his own goal again. Over on the left wing, it's got away from the Bratton. There will be an icing call this time as the Flames are back after it. So with a score of 4-2, we'll be back in just a moment. Will the owner...
honor of the AMC Concorde, please move it. Concord? My Concorde. Why is American Motors Concorde such a success? Value. Because the AMC Concorde DL is a compact that comes with its luxury extras at no extra charge. Luxuries like a Landau roof, crushed velour seats, digital clock, and a smooth, quiet ride. 1979 AMC Concord, the new American success story. See all the new AMC cars for 79 at your Metro Detroit AMC dealers. Not to belabor a point, but uh, as soon as we have an opportunity, we'll take another look at that last goal scored by Plutt. And you can make your own decisions on it. Face off will be to the right side of Vashon. Guy Chouinard will go in against San Laurent, the two number 16s. Puck came back, the shot by Vale. And it was knocked away, played in behind the Detroit goal and heading in after it, Dennis Polanich. Dropping it off for San Laurent, back to Polanich. Moving his way out center ice, a long pass on the left side. They waved off any icing, so Lemelin hands it off now to Murdoch. On the left wing, Vale, he didn't get it out. Huber stopped it at the line, and Polanich got a piece of that shot, and it's hit just wide. Coming back, McMillan. Over on the right side, Chenard hands it off to Eric Vale. He drove a shot. The save made by Vashon. Puck rolled to the goal. Now Vashon knocked it away. Long left wing pass now to LeBratton. LeBratton over the line, trying to go through. He squeezed off the puck by Murdoch. Now at Kia. Kia played it back at the Detroit blue line, coming back after it, Huber. Huber wrapped it back out center ice for San Laurent. Pass on the left wing. LeBratton took it over the line, trying to work away from Murdoch. That puck loose in the corner. That's McMillan who took a swing at it. Stopped by Glockner with a shot. Lemelin stopped it. Here's Willie Huber. And his shot, a weak one, was knocked away by Kia. Kia played it back to the Detroit zone, and Glockner comes back after it. Wings change on the move. Andre Saint Laurent heading out of Billy Lahead. Lahead got over the line, hemmed in along the boards by Murdoch. Gene Carr, number 14, gets into it. Putt took a bump from Hillworth to play in behind the Atlanta goal. Carroll knocked down, and here's Gould. John Gould clearing it off the boards back into the Detroit end. There will be no icing as it went right to Vashon. Reed Larson lost his balance, then also lost the puck, covering up as Hillworth. Now Larson heads after it. Larson jammed in along the boards, trying to pull loose. It came back now to Ribble. Ribble put it out in front. Hamel knocked that down and shoots it the length of the ice. There'll be an icing call this time against Detroit as Ribble is back to touch it and will be back in just a moment. Dreams come along. This is where you belong. Let the feeling surround you. Ribble shoots the puck. Just watch. Actually catches the puck, moves it over, finally drops it, then shoots it right along the ice and scores. That goal should have been called back. Uh, there should have been a whistle on the play before he shot the puck. You can't close your hand on a puck. And then it would have been a, would have been a penalty, would have That's right. Now they play along the boards. Came back to Fox. Fox lost it to Greg Carroll. Carroll moving it out center ice. Heads over the line. He dropped it there. Lahead couldn't reach it. Then Lahead takes it away from Plett, who's put it right on his stick. The shot right on, and Lemelin made a good stop on that one. Coming out center ice is Plett. Willie Plett was turned around by Hamel. The puck came loose. Larson handed it off. It bounced away from Carroll. Fox clearing it ahead now, and that's Gene Carr handing it off to Plett. It bounced off his stick. Came back out center ice. Back after it, Ghoul. Fifteen minutes to go in the hockey game. It's 4-2 to two Atlanta. Ribble drove it into the corner. Rogi Vashon. His pass bounces now to Perry Miller. Miller turning away from Gould's check. John Hamel. Now Hamel starts out. He was checked right at center ice. Houston played it right back onto the stick of Hamel. He slides it into the Atlanta zone, and Ribble got it back out center ice. Dale McCourt turns. John Hamel. Over on the right side now to Reed Larson, pulling away from Pronovo. Has Nedimansky. Now McCourt. It bounced off his stick. McCourt swings it back into the Atlanta zone and going in after it is Fox. Greg Fox in behind his own goal. Now the Flames start out with Lalonde bouncing it out center ice. Larson knocked it away. 
Hands it off to Nedimansky. Nedimansky's pass. Miller failed to get over the line. McCourt brought it in. He's being tied up there by Fox. He got it loose, but Lalonde sweeps it back out center ice, and Nedimansky takes it. Close checking by the Flames right now. Here's Dale McCourt moving back in. He's bounced in along the boards by Ribble. Ribble played it back into the Detroit zone. And heading back after it is Reed Larson. And Glockner. Glockner touches it. An icing call against Pittman. Our guests receive a gift certificate for a pair of Clark shoes or boots from Sherman Shoe Stores in Birmingham, the Somerset Mall, Fair Lane, and Lakeside Centers, and 12 Oaks Novi. Shots on goal are all even as you look at Lori Glockner. 23 a side. Each team with eight in the first period, 11 in the second, and four so far here in the third. But the big difference is on the scoreboard where Atlanta leads it four to two. McCourt won the draw. Huber with a shot, and Lemelin knocked that away. Cleared along the boards on the right side. Houston being bothered by Glockner that the puck came loose. And coming out with it now is Dave Shan. He fired it into the corner. Nedimansky moves in after it. Being watched by Pronobo. Sent it out now to Glockner. Glockner had trouble with it. Lalonde took it away. The puck off to the side of the Detroit goal. Goes to the corner. Houston jammed in along the boards by Huber. Then Pronobo came in to take it away. Covering up there, Dale McCourt. Buck didn't come out. It's still locked in along the boards. It came loose. Here's Lalonde with it, and he shot it wide, and the rebound of his shot goes all the way back down the ice. We near the seven-minute mark of the third period. A lot of time remaining, and the Wings could get one here. Now Shan being watched by Perry Miller. Miller tipped it away, and Paul Woods has it. Woods trying to get loose and couldn't do it. Coming out now is Houston. Kenny Houston playing it out on the right wing. Lalonde goes in after it. Went into the corner. His pass broken up by Huber, and here's Woods coming back. Paul Woods out at center ice with Bolduck up the right side. Woods got it over the line. Cleared it to Libet. The puck was high. Libet with a bouncing puck couldn't control it. Bolduck came in to take it. Knocked away from him by Lalonde. Now here'll be a chance for Paul Woods. Woods turned around, fired the shot on the short side. Knocked away by Lemelin. Here's Willie Huber in behind the Atlanta goal. He sets up Tommy Bergman. Bergman with a shot, and Houston went low and blocked that. Coming back now, Pronovo being chased by Woods. Woods is going to pick up a penalty. There's a play loose in the Detroit zone. Still, it's not called. But Dillon came in, tipped a loose puck, and when it stopped, the penalty will be called, and Woods will go off for tripping. And with Detroit playing short a man, we shall be back in a moment. Endless possibilities of Peshki meats and your imagination. Imagine a new way to enjoy that summertime standby, Peshki hot dogs. Prepare them your favorite way. Add bits of green pepper or whatever you like to your favorite kind of melted American processed cheese and pour. Your imagination makes it possible. Peshki makes it perfect. Peshki makes it perfect. Because Peshki really cares. Here's a case where Pronovo, it's just a, a skating race down through center ice. Paul Woods had to be a little tired. Otherwise, I think he would outskate Pronovo. He possibly dove a little too soon, and when he did that, he knocked Pronovo's feet from under him and wound up, wound up getting a penalty. Woods for tripping at 7.49. So Atlanta leading by two goals as the extra man. There's a shot wide of the net. Fired by Chenard. It came back to Ed Kia. His pass knocked down by Reed Larson, and McCord drives it down the ice. Going in behind his own goal, Chenard. He leads his team in goal scoring with 29. He hands it now to Eric Vail. Vail coming out center ice, dropping it back. Lawrence over the line. His pass picked off by Andre San Laurent. San Laurent bounced it away from McMillan, picked it up a second time, goes chasing after it into the Atlanta zone, but Kia stopped him there. 11 and a half minutes to go in the third period, a minute 15 remaining in the penalty to Woods. Eric Vail dropped it off on the left side. Lawrence had to turn back after it. He starts Chenard out. Here's McMillan taking the pass offside. And he was left right alone at the blue line. He moved just a split second too soon or he'd have been in cold. Well, here's a case where he gets in behind the defenseman and he just took one step too, too soon. Uh, they went ahead of the play. But he had Reed Larson beat and he could have been in the clear. So they'll keep the play right just to the Atlanta side of the center ice line. A minute eight remaining in the Detroit penalty. San Laurent and Libet now penalty killers for the wings. 
Puck came out to Vale. Vale sent it back into his own zone, goes in after it. Now big Eric Vale winding up. Heading over the line into the Detroit zone, and he's upended in a good check by Perry Miller. Play went in behind the Detroit goal. Came off to the side of the net, right out in front. They score. Left all alone, Eric Vale on the pass from McMillan again. Pretty play, but was he ever open? McMillan must have eyes in the back of his head because Miller had really upended Big Vale as he tried to go around the outside of him. Vale get up and come back over and just park just at the edge of the crease. McMillan went in the corner, picked up the puck, and made a perfect pass across through the goal mouth. And it's just an unbelievable play. A good check there by Miller, and he really got into Vale. Now Vale comes over and stands right at the corner of the net. That's, you can just see his feet there. Watch McMillan make the play across. Perry Miller get deeped over too far. And he just put it in the empty side. So Vale gets his 21st goal of the year on the power play from McMillan and Lawrence at 9.01. Here's Hamel moving in with bounced away. Now Filipov heads right fast. He's got Carr with him, the two of them over the line. It's set right out in front and they score. Carr cutting right in. And Filipov in the pass. Well, the and those two goals come just a few seconds apart. I'd like to see the replay on this if we can. I had an idea that just looking from here as though Carr may have beat the play over the blue line. Well, the head gave him a shove. Just if we can pick him up now before the pass is made, you really don't see him. I thought that he was over ahead of the play, but uh, the replay doesn't pick him up. But the wings, uh, they just they just give that goal away, regardless. And just as we're coming back, a penalty call just inside the Atlanta blue line, and the Flames are going to send Willie Plett in. And that is just Gene Carr's second goal of the season. I'd have to tell you the truth of the matter. You probably saw it, and I didn't, because I was checking the... Well, he charged. He went. He, went, he just went charging over along the boards and uh, hit Billy LaHead. <laughs> Ender... In the Carroll, I guess it was. So nine minutes and 31 seconds of time. Things happening here in a hurry. The time of the penalty to Plett as he charged Carroll. So the Wings, who trail now by four goals, have an extra man. That's Nedimansky clearing it back to the blue line to San Laurent. Andre San Laurent brings it into the Atlanta zone, pulling up along the line, looking for somebody. He hands it back to Nedimansky. Now Nedimansky's return pass broken up by Lalonde. He scoops it out to center right. Willie Huber took a whack at it, played it back to his own line. Nedimansky has it there. LeBratton down the left side. This pass to Dennis Polonich, and again, little Bobby Lalonde, who seems to be all over the ice, hangs it back into the Detroit zone. So it was Eric Vale from McMillan and Lawrence at 9.01 on the power play, and 22 seconds later at 9.23, Gene Carr, Filipov through the assist, and now Putt is in for charging at 9.31. Puck bounces to the corner, John Gould went in after it. Knocked down by San Laurent. He fired the shot, and Gould got a stick on it, deflected it high up into the crowd. Atlanta right now has outshot Detroit by one, 25 and 24, and the game part more evenly played than a 6-2 score would indicate. Well, it's Cary Grant week on the late movie, comedy, drama, and mystery, with Cary and his best on the TV 50 late movie. It starts tomorrow night at midnight on TV 50. The Wings just can't get by this third period business. Uh, yesterday, they were locked tied 3-3 in a real good hockey game in the third period. They, they just saw Buffalo come back and score three goals. Here again tonight. They're right in the game, but now they've given up three goals here in the third period again. Paul Wood digging it off the board, bringing it back off the rim of the circle. A short pass to Willie Huber. He fired that shot and deflected wide. Larson over on the left side, handing it back to Huber. Here's a chance for him. He fired another one over the top of the goal. Hit some piece of glass there and bounced right straight down. Lalonde tied up by Woods. Here's Bolduck. Danny Bolduck to Huber again with a shot. Lemelin came through with a great save. Big save on Willie Huber that time by goaltender John Lemelin. That's his biggest save of the game. Uh, it was a perfect pass out on the slot, directly in front of the net. 
Huber takes the pass, and he really unloads it right here. And Lemlin makes a pad save, then jumps on the loose puck before Nicky Lippett can put it in. So the faceoff stays in the circle off to the left of the Atlanta goal. The Flames lead it with four straight goals after the Wings had come back to tie it up, two to two. And sort of a fluke goal. 40 seconds left in the second period when it just took a crazy bounce by Vashon. Now here is Willie Huber. Huber dumped it out in front. Lemelin kicked that away. Wings battle to hold it in. That's Bolduck, but he's tied up by Ripple, and Ripple sweeps it out to center ice. Reed Larson played it back along the blue line. John Pronovo takes it. Pronovo circling back at his own line, hands it back now to Kia. Kia flipped it out center ice again. The wings bring it in. It's knocked right back out center ice the second time. Going after it now is Willie Plett. Penalty over to Plett as he's fired it into the Detroit zone. John Amell swinging it out on the left side. Cleared by Perry Miller to Bolduck. Danny Bolduck being chased by Vale. He's stopped in behind the Detroit goal by McMillan. Goes down on top of the puck. The play stays in the Detroit zone. And we'll be back in a moment. Isn't it incredible how your tableware seems to disappear? No matter how often you replace it, there's never enough to match or go around. Now at Bank of the Commonwealth, when you put money into your savings, you can put Oneida Stamus on your table. So you collect Oneida, and your money collects interest. Trying hardest to help. That's the Bank of the Commonwealth. Deposit this at the bank, Beecham. We'll need another place setting for the ambassador. Yes, madam. Along with our producer, director, Marvin Muse, I'm here at the Omni in Atlanta where the Detroit Red Wings, after playing a very close hockey game with the Atlanta Flames, have fallen four goals behind. Each team, believe it or not, Detroit has outshot Atlanta 26-25. But the Flames have taken advantage of everything that's come their way. Now this is Ed Kia playing it over on the right side, moving out with it is Murdoch. His pass ahead to McMillan. McMillan over on the left wing. Eric Bale got over the line with it, played it back toward the point. Picked it up a second time, being tied up by Nedimansky, and the puck came to Kia back out center right. Kia lifting it back into the Detroit zone. This is Lori Glockner after it. Now Jean Hamel. Hamel clearing it too far for Dale McCourt, and Murdoch just shoots it right back in. Vashon stopping it in behind his own goal. He himself cleared it out on the right wing. It got away from Nedimansky, and Kia let a shot go, and Vashon stops that. McMillan put it out in front, and loose puck, and it was Hamel who went down and intercepted the pass, or... That might have been goal number seven. Right back down the ice, Nedimansky. He was stopped right at the line. Hands it back now to Hamel. Hamel handing it off to the lock. Glockner. Now McCord over the line. He fired that shot wide. Buck bounced back to Murdoch. And Murdoch cleared it back out center ice. Larson, who just came on, will handle it there. Now Reed Larson, a long bouncing shot. Lemel in no trouble with that. Here's Murdoch. Swinging it out on the right wing for Plett. Willie Plett moving it out center ice. Wings changing on the move as Plett goes over the line. He dropped it off for Filipoff. Filipoff passed it behind him, couldn't get to it. And this is John Hillworth back into the Atlanta zone. Hillworth tried to slide it through. Fox knocked it away. He cleared it in behind his own goal and coming out with it now, Gene Carr. Ahead to Filipoff, center ice pass. That bounced away from Billy in the head. Plett handled it. Then he lost it, picked up by Ribble a second time. Carr goes chasing into the corner. Vashon went in first and played it off to Hillworth. Now it's Carroll moving with it. Carroll, his pass at the line, skips off Billy Lahad. Ribble has it there, and Ribble then it hit Filipoff into the Detroit zone. He was checked right at the line by Larson, and this is Carroll handing it off to Tommy Bergman. Bergman coming out center ice, 5.50 to go. Here now is Carroll trying to break in. He does, and Lemelin came out and stopped him. And he was actually looking around for the puck. But he'd made the save, and it lay right in front of him. The Wings just can't buy one when they do get the opportunity. Carroll goes straight in. He moved a little over to his left-hand side. He'd have been better off if he just stayed dead center, and he could have had both sides of the net to shoot it at. But Lemelin thought he had missed the puck and looked back in the net for it, but it was sitting right out in front of him. John Hillworth came over and said something to the linesman, Bob Luther. I guess some debris tossed out onto the ice, so he is going to see what he can do about that. The chip in the ice is what it is, and they've got that water bottle out there. 
Well, a reminder for all the kids 14 and under, come and get a free puck at Olympia Stadium on Sunday, February 18th at 4 o'clock when the Red Wings face off against the Penguins. Free pucks to the first 5,000 youngsters 14 and under on Puck Day, February 18th at 4 o'clock. Wings have had their scoring chances in the hockey game. They made good on two of them in the second period, but that's been it when they came from behind to tie the game at 2-2. Then Kia, who went high into the air to knock down a clearing pass, picked it up himself and just backhanded a little looping sort of a shot, and it hit Red Wings defenseman Glockner's stick and bounced in. Made it 3-2 to two as the second period came to an end. But here in the third period, Flett on a very questionable goal as he more or less caught the puck. Made it 4-2, to two and Bale and Carr on two good ones. Here now is a shot by Lalonde. He whistled that wide. Buck off the board, slides all the way back into the Atlanta zone, going back after to Shan. Shan being checked behind the net by Nick Libet. And the loose puck picked up by Marsh. Brad Marsh playing it back of his goal again, and Shan has it there. Quick pass ahead to Lalonde. Over on the right side, that's Houston. He was checked there by Libet, and Paul Woods has the puck. Very deep in his own zone. Woods fell down, got up, but lost it, then picked it up a second time. Now Woods moving his way out center ice. Bullduck on the right side. Woods took it over the line. He's checked right there. Houston. He starts Pronovo out. Pronovo digging into the Detroit zone. Pronovo took the shot. That went way wide. Libet takes it off the boards. He's dumping it out center ice. And back after it is Marsh turning at his own blue line. Four minutes, 45 seconds to go in this the third period. Washington Capitals will be at Detroit's Olympia Stadium next Tuesday night. Here's Lalonde with a shot deflected away out in front of the goal. Into the corner, Bobby Lalonde being checked there by San Laurent. It rolled in behind the net, and Glockner steers it back to San Laurent. Golduck didn't see the pass coming. It's taken now by Vail. He played it off the side of the net. LeBratton hands it off now to Glockner, and Glockner scoops it out. Bobby Lalonde played it there. He was just heading back to the bench for a player change. He wraps it right back into the Detroit zone. Four minutes, ten seconds to go with Glockner. Laid it out on the left wing, broken up by McMillan. There's Chenard right out in front, and there is Bale wide open. Whew. Seven to two. Well, what do you say on a play like that? It was perfectly executed, but Detroit tossed up the puck deep in the wrong zone. McMillan was in on it again. He made a perfect pass out to Chenard. Chenard took a look and then put it right across the open goal mouth to big Eric Bale, and he has the empty net to put it in. Detroit out of position, deep in their own zone. Boy, McMillan is building himself up. Uh, there's going to be a penalty coming up to Detroit. McMillan upended just as he crossed the blue line. And as the Wings gain possession, the penalty be called. So McMillan's having himself quite a night. We'll be back with more in just a moment. Dr. Donald L. Golden. More people wear contact lenses today because of the remarkable soft contact lens. This technological wonder is 40% water, as smooth and wet as the inside of your eyelid. Soft lenses are extremely pliable, easily conforming to the shape of your eye. The most important comfort breakthrough in the history of contact lenses, the soft lens. Another example of optometry and technology working together for your better vision. Bergman sits in the penalty box. He went off for tripping McMillan at 16.08 of this, the third period. The Flames have opened a 7-2 lead over Detroit. Four goals here in the third period after they scored just 40 seconds before the end of the second. Believe it or not, the Wings have outshot Atlanta 28-27 at this stage of the hockey game. With a pretty play from McMillan, Chenard, and Vale, and that's quite a line. Vale with two goals in the hockey game. McMillan has one. Now here's Vale moving out again. His pass went off the skate of McCourt back into the Atlanta zone. This is Ed Keogh with it. Over on the right side to Murdoch ahead to McMillan. Bobby McMillan's pass. E. Chenard picks it off and heads into the Atlanta zone. He has Vale moving in. Eric Vale with a shot. And Sean stops that as Vale was going for the hat trick. Back after it, Murdoch. Three minutes, five seconds to go in the third period. A minute and 15 in the penalty time to Detroit's Tommy Bergman. 
Chouinard along the left side. Rolled it off to the side of the Detroit goal. Vashon handed it there to Paul Woods. Knocked away. McMillan's pass, though, picked off by Saint Laurent. Andre Saint Laurent now to Paul Woods. Woods moved in. He whistled a shot. That was broken up by Murdoch. Came out in front, and Kia has it there. Now Ed Kia playing it ahead, and this is Gene Carr. Carr over on the left side. Willie Plett goes to the corner with it. Willie Huber knocked it away from him. Buck came right out in front. And it's kept in. Here now is John Gould. Gould playing it to Pluck with a shot. That hit the side of the goal. Going in after it, San Laurent. He golfed it down the ice. And it went off a Red Wing player on the Detroit bench, evidently. So they're going to bring a play right back into the Detroit. And we'll be back in a moment. Jeep pickup challenges you guys to take that hill. Easy. You got it. Your automatic four-wheel drive pickups against my Jeep with Quadratrack automatic four-wheel drive. Normal automatic? Right. The Chevy's losing traction. The Ford's spinning its wheels. Hey, the Dodge is slipping, too. Hey, look at the Jeep pickup climb. No trouble at all. Gotta admit it. Under these conditions, Jeep's got the best traction. And best traction means best pickup, huh, guys? See a Jeep dealer for test results that prove who's got the best traction. Just 15 seconds remaining in Bergman's penalty time now as the Flames move out to center ice. Fox cleared it into the Detroit zone, going in after it, Nick Livett, along with Hamel. The puck is underneath Hamel's knee, and they stop the play. Face-off stays to the right of Rogi Vashun. Said it would be a little difficult to blame Vashun for too many of the seven goals scored by Atlanta in this hockey game. You know, this, this has been a game that's hard to explain, Bruce. The Wings played very defensive. They were very much in it. A goal late in the second period, a, a lucky goal to put Atlanta ahead 3-2. Then a goal that, the first goal in the third period, a goal that could have been called back because of uh, handling the puck with his hand, closed his hand on it. But then it just opened the gate, and it's wide, just wide open now, and uh, the Wings are not doing too much defensive hockey at all. Ribble's shot was blocked by Vashon. The play goes in along the boards in the Detroit zone. They hammered it there. Still struggling for it. And finally, the referee stops it with a minute 39 to go. Well, fans, you can stop in at any Parts Plus auto store and fill out a coupon for a fan appreciation award of two box seats at the March 20th Red Wings versus Chicago Blackhawk game at Olympia. And on each televised game starting the 19th of February, Parts Plus will present this fan appreciation award during the Parts Plus post-game show. We invite you to stay tuned for it today, and we'll go into it a little more fully. Now Gene Carr's pass came right out in front, and Rogie Vashon handled the shot of Willie Flett. Let go digging into the corner after it. But still controlling it, played it back toward the line. Ribble let the shot go off to the side of the net. Hamel playing it in behind his own goal, Reed Larson. Ahead now to Carroll. Greg Carroll has LeBratton coming down the left side. LeBratton over the line. Fox coming back. LeBratton dropped the pass, but nobody there. And it's fired back to the Detroit blue line. Reed Larson has it. Both teams are back at full strength, and John Gould is at his own blue line. Puck bounce of Dennis Polonich. Polonich turning. Fan trying to feed it into the Atlanta zone. Reed Larson's pass picked off by Marsh. Here's Brad Marsh dropping it off for Lalonde. The return pass, that was Kenny Houston, didn't get through. Houston goes to the corner. Glockner bothering him there. And it was Carroll that knocked it away. And now LeBratton. Danny LeBratton over the line. He's checked right there. Pronovo takes it. John Pronovo clearing it back down the ice off the left wing. Here's Pronovo going into the Detroit zone. Glockner kicked it away. It's sent by Huber to the blue line. Not out the first time. Now Huber scoops it out. Center ice. The wings are two on one with Campbell. And LeBratton. LeBratton picked the shot and going low. It was knocked away by Lemelin. He sent it over the top of his own goal. Going into the corner. Now Lalonde with 10 seconds to play in the hockey game. Here's Bobby Lalonde carrying into the Detroit zone. He goes to the corner, tried to center it. Huber checks him there, and the buzzer goes to end the game. So a disappointing loss to the Detroit Red Wings, who came from behind to tie it in the second period, and then saw five unanswered goals, and Bobby Crom throws a little piece of paper down in disgust as he'll head into the Detroit room, and the Red Wings will be heading back to Detroit 
for their next game coming up Tuesday against Washington. That's the end of the game with the final score. The Atlanta Flames 7, Detroit Red Wings 2 will be back in just a moment. I'm accustomed to riding around in Cadillacs. So why am I in this AMC Pacer wagon instead of a Cadillac? Well, this Pacer is not only quite luxurious and handles so easily, but it also has an astounding amount of room. Did you know that the AMC Pacer is just about as wide as a Cadillac? So it feels like a big car, even though it isn't. And I feel like I'm in a big car, even though I'm not. AMC Pacer feels like a big car, but it isn't. See your local TV book for a free pizza coupon. What do you get with your interest from most banks when you deposit money? Next. What do you get with your interest when you deposit money in Bank of the Commonwealth? I got a piano. I got a piano. I got these tools. I got a watch. At Bank of the Commonwealth, when you deposit as little as $1,000 in a seven-year, 7% 7 time certificate, you'll not only earn big interest, but also a big bonus, some bigger than others. Trying hardest to help. That's the Bank of the Commonwealth. The wildest, craziest comics in town are up against contestants dedicated to keeping a straight face. Can you make her laugh? Yes, I can see she's got terrariums growing on her glasses I... there. <laughs> I see that. An exciting scene from Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea. <laughs> they got a sequel to Grease Now Zip, which is supposed to be pretty <laughs> laugh. It's Make Me Laugh, a new kind of comedy show, tomorrow night at 11 on TV 50. Sid Abel, the Red Wings maybe shouldn't play the third period of a hockey game. They came from behind to tie the uh, Buffalo Sabres yesterday, and then bang, the Sabres came on in the third period, and it was all over. This afternoon, they came from behind to tie the uh, Atlanta Flames here at the Omni 2-2 two two with some very inspired play. Atlanta got a kind of a lucky break on a go-ahead goal just seconds before the period was over, but then third period, whammo, four goals. It's hard to explain, Bruce. Uh, you just don't have an explanation for a team that played very, very strong for two periods, the wins, as they did yesterday. Then turn around and not come up with anything at all in the third period. They just let the Sean stand back there by himself, and you can't fault the goaltender even though they did score seven goals. The Red Wings had in that last period 10 shots in the net, and uh, Atlanta had 10, the overall shots in goal, Atlanta 31, Detroit 29. So that's it, the final score here at the Omni in Atlanta, Georgia, was 7-2 to two with the Atlanta Flames picking up the victory. And this is Bruce Martin along with Sid Abel saying stay tuned for our post-game show. Every day the world awakens People dream of what awaits them Getting ready to go on out and find their world Every day we fly we're showing The experience of knowing What the world wants when they want to fly The world The post-game show is brought to you by Coca-Cola. Coke adds life to Red Wing hockey. And by Parts Plus, automotive name brands you can trust.
made mention of him coming into tonight's telecast. Bobby McMillan, who wears number 11 and appeared out there on the ice. Uh, he was about the fourth leading scorer in the National Hockey League coming into the game. He had the first goal, a pretty effort, and he made three fine plays for three assists. So he has now 53 assists on the season, 24 goals, I believe it is, and he has himself some kind of a year, hasn't he? Well, Bobby McMillan beat the wings by himself. Here, he came into the game, Bruce, as you say, with 50 assists, leading the league in assists, picks up three more. Nothing deep about them either. No, they were all beautiful plays. The wings just stopped in the third period after a couple of bad breaks, so they get behind and then just lost all their cool. Well, we made mention during the course of that third period, very late in it, that uh, our Parts Plus uh, Fan Appreciation Night is going to be coming up, and beginning with uh, our next telecast on the 19th of February, we're going to be uh, announcing a winner for a coupon, uh, well, actually a winner of two free tickets to a Chicago-Detroit Red Wing game that's going to be played March 20th. And all you have to do is stop in to any Parts Plus Auto Store and fill out a coupon for Fan Appreciation Award. And if we uh, pick your name, then we say congratulations. We'll see you at Olympia March 20th. Sid, uh, I know that you've had the task again, sometimes good, sometimes not, of picking out the Red Wing star of a hockey game. When you lose by a five, it's not too easy, but we'll see what you've done after this. The sign of quality parts, competitively priced, plus the kind of service you can count on. Why do you buy from Parts Plus? Well, there when I want them with the parts I need. Quality. With Parts Plus, I know I'm getting the best. We've got a wide selection of hard to find parts. We get the answers that help us do it right. Look for auto stores displaying this sign. Parts Plus. For automotive name brands you trust. Close hockey game for about two periods, Sid, and then the roof fell in, and it's your task now to choose a Red Wing star. You know, I never get a chance to pick a Red Wing star on a winning hockey game. Did you realize well, that? Well, not since uh, October. October, yeah. And, and, and we didn't televise that <laughs> game. But if there was a star, and it's awful hard to say a star when you get, you're get you beaten 7-2, to two, I'd have to say the number one draft pick of last year, Willie Huber. Willie Huber has come on stronger than any other hockey player on the Detroit club. He's getting more confidence every game out, carries the puck well, shoots the puck, and uh, is rough enough in spots. Uh, I wish there was an experienced hockey player playing with him. I think Willie Huber would show them that he is really a class hockey player. Okay, Sid, for being the Red Wing star of this hockey game, Willie Huber receives a nice uh, chest full of Coke from the Coca-Cola Bottling Company. So the Red Wings are returning home, and uh, they will be getting set now for the Washington Capitals, and there is a club that has come on strong. That'll be Tuesday night. We'll be with you on WJR Radio with that one at 20 minutes past the hour of 7 o'clock. And Washington, they're a team now that has to be reckoned with. They're very much in the picture. If they can win a couple more games, they're within six or seven points of Los Angeles and Pittsburgh. Max McNabb, their general manager, he thinks they're going to make the playoffs, and they're really fighting to get in. Well, they've been playing well in the latter half of the season, so... That'll be the next hockey game coming up uh, Tuesday night at Olympia. So again, from here at the Omni in Atlanta, the final score was the Atlanta Flames 7, the Detroit Red Wings 2. And this is Bruce Martin along with Sid Abel saying goodbye from Atlanta, Georgia. The post-game show was brought to you by Coca-Cola. Coke adds life to Red Wing hockey. And by Parts Plus, automotive name brands you can trust. Detroit Red Wing Hockey was brought to you by your AMC and Jeep dealers, home of the Jeep CJs, Cherokee, Wagoneer, and AMC cars. And by Labatt's. For beer at its finest, call for Labatt's. And by Bank of the Commonwealth, trying hardest to help. And by Little Caesars, a winner any way you slice it.
this is field communications in detroit.